You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens weekly where two old guys oftentimes bring in other old guys. Never an old woman, though. They're always, hmm. they're, so, they're always, hmm. for lovely some reason they never young. want to be called that. So <laughs> <laughs> just old, old guys and just lovely, lovely ladies. I'm making my promise right here, right now, before the end of 2017, if we get $400 on Patreon, I'll get an old lady on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it my goal. I'm, I'm down. Old, an old lady in 2017. At, at, at 359, we'll bring on an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> I do like 359 a lot better. <laughs> Uh, and this week, uh, it's been a request for a while, and when Dave and I were talking about what to fill in the gaps before we get back to the Genesis list. Which will happen. It will happen. Eventually. Yeah. It's just like right now, it's just Shining Force 2, I want to play all the way through. I'm still working on it. I know, Dave, you still got to work I, on man, it. Man, I want to so. start it. So, so, <laughs> so, but at the same time, like Breath of the Wild came out, I like know. shit's going on. You, you on finished it. Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. So, I've been having, I've been, I've been really enjoying video games recently. Yeah. It's been really fucking refreshing <laughs> to be like, uh, are we going to do an episode on this? Nope. No, we're not. I'm just playing this because it's fun. Yeah. Let's know. It's good. <laughs> but so, in order to fill in the gaps while we work on Shining Force 2, uh, people are requesting we do an episode over Ultima Online. Ultima Online. So we brought in our two foremost ultimologists, one half of Tadpog Sweethearts, Mm -hmm. Josh Nance. Hello. Hey, Josh. And one rather wizened sage, Ian Jan. Good morning, everybody. What's up, Ian? Hi. It's weird hearing you say good morning. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I figure a lot of people probably listen to this show in the morning. I guess probably like 80%. I'd like to bid them a good morning. A a fond (laughs) morning. I hope hope your drive to work is going well, Mm -hmm. everyone. Or your uh, day at work as you're sitting here with these, uh, with our us in your ears. I've got an interview to do a drive time show on a local radio station, so I'm practicing. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Don't leave us. No, never. Or Mm-mm. actually, uh, bring us with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, before we get to Ultima Online, we have part two of a package I have laid out. Yeah. See all these hot sauces from Face Full of Alien Wing Wong. Yes. So I have here. I know Dave. You and I will try these, and then Josh Ian, you're welcome to try these five hot sauces as well. Which I feel I feel silly because I didn't realize um, until I Google did a Google search for. I'm old, so I say I did a Google search instead of Google. <laughs> um, uh, I did a Google search uh, after when I was doing the show notes for our last episode, uh, which was an all call show. I did a Google search for face full of alien wing wong because I was trying to decide if face full had two L's at the end or just one. Um, and then what I found was um, a VG Cats comic uh, where I assumed that that uh, face full of alien wing wong got his or her name from. Was it one or two L's? Uh, I cannot remember. Oh, damn. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm going to say two L's is probably right, though. Um, I needed it. Like, I got the answer I needed at the time and then immediately erased it. It's mind palace. It's how I live. You got to keep things mm-hmm. tidy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I get yeah. it. I get it. What are these, uh, these O crackers? Here? Uh, well, these are Melissa's Treasures. So I'm going Heaven to. You're gonna I'm going sh- to hope you're going to share that with all I'm, of us. I'm going That's to hope so she does. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Have these crackers been blessed? Well, they came. They came pre-blessed <laughs> because these are her favorite uh, crackers in the world. Up in Louisville, we found. I've looked for these everywhere, and then when we went to the liquor barn in Louisville. They happened to stock them, so oh, we I'm bought familiar. about ten bags. <laughs> ten bags. <laughs> yep. What kind of crackers are these? They are New York. New York bagel chips, plain. Oh, those are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've had those before. I'm those familiar are really with Because I could They're find, really I just never could find the plain ones. If I could find a bag, they weren't plain. So when we finally found them, yep, here we go. So I figured they would be a good medium for trying these sauces. All right, so I'll just go and order. Oh, he, he wrote us an order, didn't he? To try them in. Probably. I don't, I don't Where have a piece of paper. Where is that letter? I don't know. We're, <laughs> we're going to wing it. All right. <laughs> From left to right is the order. <laughs> All right, so this first one here is 
Let's see. Cajones Fari Foods Company, El Chupacabra Hot Sauce. And you know it's hot if El Chupacabra is in the name. The Goat Sucker. We're all familiar, yes? Josh, I figured in- you were. Intimately. Yeah. And yeah. I'll, pass, <laughs> I'll pass them down. Let's be like we're taking Tadpog Communion. Mm-hmm. This is, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I may bail after first one. Because I don't do this. Oh, you're not a spicy guy. I am, but I just, I'm just i a big pussy. I mean, that's all there is to it. <laughs> Sorry, Taryn. So, yeah. Sorry, banana hammock. <laughs> all right. Here you ready? Mm-hmm. Yep. That is hot. Mm-hmm. That has some heat to it for sure. I got it right on my right on my yeah. hot taster. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, remember I was pulling it toward my mouth, I felt it. Wow, that is it's, that is hot. Mm-hmm. Really, am I the only in. one who shoved the whole thing in my mouth? Well, mm-hmm. yeah. Was this my water? Uh huh. Thank you. I made sure I got you guys water. <laughs> Dear, would you like to try one? <clears throat> well, that's yeah. I don't know if mm-hmm. you guys knew this, but my wife is awesome. That was probably the one we were supposed to eat last. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I don't know. There's Ooh, one that so. says the formidable fear. So these are the that's the most serious hot sauce we've been sent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which one is that one? That's messed up. That's hot. Yeah, that is hot. Okay, it's that getting is, in there and uh, staying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> it's on the tongue and it oh, ain't leaving. It's, it's moved in. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, it's paying some of the rent. It's actually. like the Mucinex mu- mucus. Yeah. 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 It ain't leaving. <laughs> it is paying the rent, though, so at least there's that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <Shit>. Yep. <laughs> face full of alien wing wong. You done good, son. I got a face full of alien wing wong right now. It does feel like it. I think that's what this feels like, right? All right. So five stars. Oh, yeah. Chupacabra. Yeah. Would, would eat again. <clears throat> All right now, find us a Ooh. find us a. Uh, yeah. Which one do you think in there is the least spicy? Let's yeah. do that one next. Let's do that next. Um, <laughs> this one. We're gonna need more water. Now, what is that one called? Mountain <laughs> Man Chipotle Pepper Sauce. You think would be okay, Chipotle? Yeah. Mountain, the Mountain Man is showing off his bulge. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not gonna dip out yet, but I am gonna wait for the consensus, and I want you to guys to tell me based on the last one <laughs> you, how our one is where we at. <laughs> Because I can't do another super hot one like that. I got you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not. I'm just not tuned in for it. It's good. Wanna, it's hot. You guys want to play in cracker? To, yeah. Yeah. You know. Actually, that'd be pretty cool. I actually want. I'm. I'm watching my cake house, so I'm gonna pass you this half of that cracker that I didn't eat. Okay. I'm gonna re re pour that one. I got a little bit too much on it. Melissa. Melissa. Yeah, it's hot. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That one's really. We're all sweating in here. It's gonna that smell one's really fucking. It's gonna hot. smell like sweaty adults when we open. Ooh. No words. No yeah. words. They should have sent a poet. Oh, that's one of the things I enjoy most about my wife. I found a heat equal, a heat equal. Let's see, Dave, you got yours. I got mine. I got my Mountain Man. Ian, you're gonna wait. Josh, well, I'll. I'll you can give me one. And Get it prepped. If if it's not gonna be hotter than what we just had, I'm I'm in. But I I kind of don't want to ruin what we've got going on here with this first one. We can always go back. It's happy. It, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna have more. But I don't want to forget. Okay, Mountain Man, Chipo- uh, Chipotle pepper. All right, here we go. No, that is not. A, that's not bad. No, mm-hmm. it's tasty. All right, uh-huh. but it's I like not. It, yeah, yeah, that one's got more flavor to it. Mm-hmm. I can taste more vinegary, Tabasco y. I can actually taste that. Yeah, the the first one was just like boom, boom. being <laughs> that mouth can, fucked. Yeah, that one yeah. came with the, <laughs> came with the scorch yeah. first. It leads with scorch and uh-huh. finishes with, with scorch. scorch. With more scorch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's we'll keep let's, going with Mountain Man. My okay, nose is running. <laughs> Fire roasted habanero sauce. Oh, that one's got a seal on it. The others didn't. So, they've been, nope. they've been uh, tampered with. The rest of ah, the rest no, of definitely preview. no germs. Oh, that's a hot one. Or poison uh, can survive that first hot sauce. Yeah, I got a little bit on my fingers. So that's got well, this has more kick to it too than uh, Chipotle. Since you got some on your fingers, you some on definitely your fingers. go pee right now. <laughs> Thank you. Do that for later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke about me fingering her. <laughs> <laughs> That Choco Chica's right there on the door. <laughs> That's a good woman you got there. That's the best woman I've got there. There we go. This smells peppery. Is it going to hurt? Uh, it doesn't it smell like it's going to hurt that bad. I think we might have started with the second mm-hmm. it's the second hottest one. John Turley's going to be proud of me Yeah, for trying all these hot sauces. Yeah, he should be proud. Oh, I thought of a name for him. Instead of Burger Bottom, mm-hmm. you thought of a title? Mm-hmm. What? Reaper Maine. 
Reaper Main, Edge Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Reaper Main, Edge Lord, John Turley. I'm down. Think on it. I'm not. All I'm right. just. I, I think about this whenever. You're like every his, time I come into the show, I'm like, what's your, I'm thinking about John Turley's nickname? You're like his congressman. I am. I'm, also I'm lobbying. With, I'm also fine with Bitch Wizard after him complaining <laughs> so much. Bitch Wizard. <laughs> Ah, uh, Melissa brought milk. Oh. Smart girl. <laughs> All right, fire roasted habanero. Let's do it. That one's got a little heat. Yeah, that's spicier than the um, a different than the second one, but it's not super super spicy. No, no. It, it's it's tangier. It's different. It's a lot different. That first one wrecked us. I think uh-huh. it wrecked me. I'll speak for myself. If you find the letter, I'm telling you that it wrecked probably, um. so far. It's well, going to yeah. be the last on the list. I don't know that one in that that clear or lighter colored one scares me a little. Because we have this lighter one is from the same company, and it has a skull on it, right? Uh-huh. Which you know that's a that's a sign. So that's why I'm going to do this one first. <clears throat> what is that? Heartbreak. This is the magic card. Heartbreaking Dawn's Fervor Reaper Chili Sauce. Hey Reaper, it's Reaper, a sign. Yeah. Like the Carolina Reaper? If that's the case, that's going to be a hot bastard. I think it's going to be, yeah, I'm trying to read the back of it. Like Reaper made, John Heartbreaking Curly. Dawn continues to master the art of flavor and fire in bringing you fervor. We've taken a bold concentration of fresh Reaper chilies, the latest raging extreme peppers. Yeah, those going to be hot. And backed them with all natural combination of orange berries and spices. And we came in it a little bit. Uh-huh. Just what it says. <laughs> <laughs> we all came in it. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out there's a lot of people working here. So the bottom, <laughs> it pretty much all comes. It's a bottle yeah. of cum. We dyed this cum red. So if, you think. if you can stand putting this inside of you, we'll get you pregnant. We it's, guarantee. Um, <laughs> it's xenomorph cum, so it, <laughs> so it burns a little. I'm gonna have to hear the verdict on this too. Oh, like, that's a big old glob. I got a big you old get glob. The glob. Let few, All right, few your hands get on the cum. <laughs> no, man, I like it. I'm more hands, the better. <laughs> Tiny glob for Ian. Tiny baby reaper glob. That's good. You got a, you got a nice glob. That is a, that smells hot. Got a little, I'm going to wait. That smells hot. I'm going to wait on this. Yeah. Melissa's going in for more. I'm getting high. Yeah. Off of this heat. Yeah. I can yeah. I can actually feel it in the back of my neck. Yeah. It's like turning like sweat the, or no, it's turning the back of my ones? neck numb a little bit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's actually turning it black. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> it's like you got touched by Ted That's Cruz. Just the skates. <laughs> Oh, Tyler, you gave yourself a lot. Yeah, I was about to put a drop, and I was like, nah, nah, I'm not going to be a bitch wizard like John Turley. <laughs> <laughs> and you tried, man. You Sorry. tried. Ah, <laughs> uh, the days when Burger Bottom <laughs> yeah. was preferable. Yeah, you go back to bitch wizard, and you tell him you tried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm kidding, John. Heartbreak, heartbreaking Dawn's Forever Reaper Chili. All right. I got to wait. I got to wait for what this is all about. So far, not bad. It ain't bad. It's no. sweet. Mm-mm. No, this isn't bad. No. Nah. No. Nope. I'm surprised. What the fuck was in that first one? Can we read that? I'm not <laughs> fond of the taste of that I one. I could try. Nah. I mean, it's okay. It's fine. It's too sweet for me. Way for too it. sweet. Something called turbo acid? <laughs> <laughs> Some, something called uh, the other guys come? <laughs> <laughs> something called Vulcans come? I don't know. <laughs> the deadly chupacabra is a legendary... Cryptid, 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 crypto, cryptid. rumored to inhabit parts of the it's Americas. Cryptid. It'd be like, uh, oh, I'm about to offend a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> please, please, please like continue. Bigfoot. Trump's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. a great job. <laughs> like Bigfoot would be a cryptid, but that's gonna the Bigfoot people, people oh, don't the consider that don't consider him a. Cryptid. We're very, He's we're like, very so big in, in the Bigfoot, the Bigfoot communities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay. Cryptids. The namesake sauce is a blend of super hot Caribbean chilies, each of whose legendary burn is greater than one million Scoville units, Scoville heat units. Uh, that I believe. Because mm-hmm. that still, was high. Uh, my, yeah, my tongue's still kind yeah, of yeah, burning yeah. a little bit oh, from yeah. that one, not from the others, I'm sure. All right. My saliva's really nice and hot, too, which is really <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you like turn around and spit on the TV, and it just a hole. Yeah, yeah. Just melts a hole. <laughs> My glasses are gonna fog up. Like up. I can, I can feel it. Flip up your raptor <laughs> fin, or not raptor dinosaur fin. My spitter. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So from the same company, it's not Cajones. It's Cajon's Fiery Foods Company. The formidable fear hot sauce. Oh man, 
Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna eat. We're gonna eat this, and then we're done. Right? Just uh, reading it has Tyler. Yeah, like sweating. that roof of my mouth feels heavy. Uh huh. <laughs> it is no. I'm it's not, like it makes my head just wants to. It is, <laughs> it is the same company, isn't uh-huh. it? Uh huh. I am not joking. My like my. I do feel like my glasses are gonna fog up. Whew. The formidable line of Kajan's Caribbean style hot sauces. Man. Can you spell Kajans? It's C A J O H N S. It's not Cajones. Cajones. It's Kajans. Yeah, it's he's right on the pronunciation. A Caribbean line of sauces showcasing the hottest yellow chilies in the region. Fear features the yellow Scotch bonnet, famous all over the islands. We throw in a measure of yellow Maruga scorpion and yellow seven pot for a fearsome heat to go along with the Barbados style mustard sauce. Huh. Enhanced with spice rum and a kiss of vanilla. Huh. Man, that that sounds pretty good. Sounds mm-hmm. tasty. It does sound tasty. It does. It's probably gonna be really hot. N- novice. These are not for chill. Warning. These are not for novice. Oh man. <laughs> these I didn't are not have for my <laughs> glasses on. I thought this is not for children. These are not but for no, novice no, children. <laughs> <laughs> if you're one of those veteran children, <laughs> you've been a child for most of your life. These are not for the novice chili head. Okay. So this is gonna be a hot one. I'm worried. I'm gonna pass you my uh, my quarter bagel chip. Which you dropped in hot sauce. Oh, you dropped them in the bagel chips. We don't even know which one. I'm losing. I'm losing motor function. Ah, <laughs> uh, you gave me a you gave me a tiny drop. Thank you, sir. This smells hot. Yes, this smells hot. I can't. No, that's too much. You have that one. <laughs> I want like a Thanks, little bitty baby bit. I I admit you're more of a man than me. Oh man, that crack like that cracker Homer. started smoking. I feel like Homer <laughs> at the chili cook. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Guatemalan insanity pepper. Insanity pepper. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> coddle from the inmates of a prison. Okay, Melissa's out of the room right now, so man, we go ahead and I don't know when she's coming back. Do you want to go ahead and do it? Does without it smell her? hot? Because I can't smell anymore. It smells hot to me. This is like Oh yeah. yeah it smells hot yeah. to me. <laughs> did you put too much on there? You did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting I, I can't smell anymore. Well, that's one of the side effects of eating these, I guess. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm going blind. You're doing. I'm doing cox. I've got no sense of smell. <laughs> All right. I am not, I'm not, I can't wait anymore, Tyler. Okay. Kajan's fiery foods, the formidable fear hot sauce. Here we go. Formidable fear. Okay. All right, but Jesus, help me. I mean, I can taste the mustard, and I like it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's as nearly as hot as Not the, nearly, yeah. the goat sucker we ate. Nope. Ain't these all kind of paled to that first one? Yeah, yeah, it was we, hot, then though. Maybe they paled because hot. of that first one. Yeah. We probably went in reverse order, I'm yep. sure, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were probably supposed to save that. I think maybe that would be next to last on the hotness scale so far. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring us... You brought us ice cream? <laughs> Thank <Thanks>. you, Melissa. <laughs> that's very nice. Thank you. Dear, do you want to try this one? <laughs> so if it's truly like the Simpsons, if I put it near my tongue, it's going to melt. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It did, actually. Whew. Okay. We're wow. going to do the That's nice. rest of the mm-hmm. podcast That's like we have nice. colds. Thank you. <laughs> like we have colds? Yeah. Because <laughs> we're all yeah. sniffly. I'm snotty. Yeah. I'm snotty. I was all stopped up, though, anyway. So this, damn, this really helps. It's not as bad as that first one. That's good podcast. Yeah. Huh. What are you pointing at? Oh, thank you. Oh. <sighs> All right, <laughs> man. You're just gonna hear me sucking on the spoon the rest of the night. Good job, a face full of alien wing wong. You did good. Yeah, there that's was the some best good stuff in there. That's the best hot sauce package I think. Like I shouldn't say the best, the hottest. And Jack of Ziggy Moons, that poblano mm-hmm. hot sauce. Like I have pretty much gone through every single bit of it that I have because mm-hmm. I like it's it good so stuff. much. I broke my I broke my Tadpog hot sauce cherry. I've never had uh, sampled any of the hot sauce you guys have had till today. Congrats. We got some new mail. You want to see if. The sure incredibly which... hot sauce that Josh Edward, Time Lord Josh Edwards sent has arrived. Oh man. Like this is like millions of scope. Yeah, he said like he I think he felt bad after sending it. Like yeah. oh man. <laughs> yeah, he did say that he w- kind of regretted sending it a little bit. <laughs> no, I won't eat that then. Yeah, there's vid- <laughs> there are videos of people eating it. He actually asked us to do a video of us eating. And they suggest to do like a toothpick, oh, like dip a toothpick God. in and I'm take a drop. Drooling on myself, that. guys. <laughs> kind of like that flashbang oh, thank stuff. You. Oh. Yeah, oh, flashbang. flashbang was rough. I wouldn't do that one. I couldn't even smell that one because it burned. This turned into ice cream cast. It's so good. <laughs> yep. Ice cream social cast. <laughs> I don't ice know cream that social boys. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever enjoyed a cup of ice cream this much. <laughs> I know, right? This is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it's also tasty. It is. Good call, Melissa. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I like your Tetris shirt, by the way. That's mm-hmm. baller as fuck. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good job, Tyler. Thank you. 
All right. Um, Ultima Online. Mm -hmm. Or do we want to open one of these packages? What do you think? No, we're good. Okay. Let's do some Ultima Online. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot to say about it. Uh, yeah. Although I feel like I'm probably cursing ourselves by saying that. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, do you guys hear that? Yep. What? Uh, Me what is, sweating. It's the Josh. It's the Josh <laughs> sweating trade. It's just cars and cars full of Josh sweat rolling down the tracks. Uh, which of course got to come from somewhere. Splashing down the tracks. Just yeah, joshing down the tracks, which of course ushers in a segment uh, that we like to call Dave reads from Wikipedia. Uh, Dave is not prepared. So let me just go ahead and type in Wikipedia, Ultima Online. W How did you make w six cups of ice cream Wikipedia. appear so quickly? Oh. It was just, you weren't gone, but like, <laughs> she was gone for like 45 seconds and came back with six cups full of ice cream. She went to the uh, plane of ice cream. <laughs> She's used to dipping it out for multiple children. Wait, did this come off of the same train? The Josh Sweat train? The Josh Sweat mm -hmm. train. Mm -hmm. I wonder this is so what, what makes it so good. This is what my sweat tastes like. Do you know Josh? Because yeah. I'm so damn Josh sweet. sweats vanilla. <laughs> I like to welcome Josh's mom to the show. <laughs> he sweats vanilla and comes ice cream. <laughs> I have heard her say that. I have. It's really it was, awkward. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. <laughs> we all just played along, but I was really uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, How Ultima do you Online. know that? Topics. <laughs> <laughs> Ultima Online is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game released on September 24th, 1997 by Origin Systems. Uh, it is a fantasy role-playing game set in the Ultima universe. It is known for its extensive player versus player combat system. Since its release, it has added eight expansion packs, a booster pack, and dozens of free content updates. The release of Ultima Online Kingdom Reborn in 2007 brought a new game engine with upgraded visuals. I am pretty much only going to be talking about Ultima Online as it was from 1998 to yeah. 2001. Yeah, me too, although right. I will say I did play Kingdom Reborn for did you? about a week. Before we get into uh, old school Ultima, what did you think of Kingdom Reborn? Uh, it wasn't that much different than old school. Uh, it was better graphically, and I think that was the one where they added like elves and tree kingdoms and things that weren't in there before. But the basic the basic uh, system was the same. They added races? There was an uh, elf race. If I'm wrong, I, I don't no, know. No, it's believable because, I mean... They I think that's right that they added elves i think and i think they, you are right because uh not long ago i tried a free server and it was very explicit that this was not the version with the elves okay and i was like what the fuck elves yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and i played it and it was fine um but i actually got my old account out yeah. and didn't you remembered the uh, password and everything well i had to get it reset Okay, I had to do that, but uh, I got my old characters out. And I still had millions of gold in the bank. No shit. Yeah, I couldn't recall to my house anymore. It was gone because the house was gone. The house was gone because they still fell away after. The, we can talk. There about There were houses. people, yeah, waiting was, around, just yeah. w waiting for it to decay. The housing system yeah. in Ultima Online was one of my favorite favorite aspects of that game. Certainly. I loved it, and we should talk about that definitely at length. Definitely. But uh, my house was gone, but my bank was still intact. All my rares and stuff, and my it was weird. So how long did you play? Not long. I I, I paid like whatever it is, fifteen bucks. It's still expensive. It's that still is expensive. that is bizarre. Which just blew that's my mind with so many. That's so dumb. I know. If it was so like many, five dollars a month, I would probably yeah, go yeah. and like check Why not? it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if 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 it were, I thought the same thing because you've got so many worthwhile MMOs out there that cost five bucks a month. It's more than Netflix. Whatever. It should be more than Netflix. I, I agree. <laughs> exactly. And uh, that. That is probably why I don't go back and play just a little bit because Ultima to me was one of my fa one of my favorite games ever. I had more oh, fuck fun yes. playing Ultima, and I think it had to do with when we played, the time at which we played, the fact that a lot of our friendships were sort of formed around this game, and how all of that came together for me is just a really really good time in my life. I, and, I uh, agree. I wouldn't have had nearly as much fun playing had a lot of my friends not yeah, been playing. Yeah. Well, we yeah. all played from the same source. Mm -hmm. Like it kind of started at Apex mm -hmm. and then spread mm -hmm. to me, to spread to Josh. To so we all kind of started the UO kick. Together, yeah, and I had no intention of playing. I didn't know anything about it. I'd never even heard. I didn't know what I was doing, and then I found myself. It's the type of game where you find yourself becoming immersed in it for for your own reason. And yeah. It's, and what and the thing is, whatever your reason, nobody judges you for that. No, and you can obsess over it. Like, oh no, like, no, example, I, I judged. Uh, I judged <laughs> Tyler. I judged the fuck out of Tyler. 
I remember That's what you always do. Yeah, <laughs> you, you no, judgy. Come yeah, I know because <laughs> I was uh, I was going out with a couple of my friends. We were going and slaying dragons, get, gathering treasure. We'd come back to town, drop off all of our bags of treasure that we were loaded down with, and uh, Tyler's character, Tyronius. Damn right. Mm-hmm. Uh, was in the uh, w- was baking bread the whole time. Mm-hmm. He was just stack I, up on stack mm-hmm. of breads. I did not give a fuck about so, <laughs> so yeah. It was I just love the crafting system. I, all I wanted. I, I, yeah, I was I was very judgy about <laughs> I did, <laughs> about Tyler's playing. I did a little bit. Well, and I you know it's not like being a a GM r- cooking them motherfucker. <laughs> it's nice. not like I was GM cooking mm-hmm. as well. It, it's not like being a Reaper main where you could look at someone <laughs> and say, you know, can't you do anything else? Else, uh, <laughs> every every aspect of that game had a function. Uh, if you were into crafting, you could be a Fletcher. You could be a, a lot of crafting skills. Oh, yeah. uh, you could, lumberjacking would help you if you were an axe wielder. You know, you get a if you were a grandmaster lumberjack, you get a bonus to your, yeah, your axe wielding synergy in, bonus. In There's a lot of that. synergy. Which, uh, fishing was amazing because when you get grandmaster fishing, you would pull up a kraken, and if you could kill the kraken, you get just treasure maps and everything. Of shit, mm-hmm. treasure maps. Mm-hmm. and uh, mining, you making shadow armor and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, it just, it was a thriving ecosystem and it worked. Even with pieces of shit like you me, you're looking at me, and killing everyone. <laughs> yeah, that was my, that was my jam. <laughs> Player yeah. killers had their place though because boy, when we needed to camp a decaying house. Yeah, yeah. We called all our PK friends. Yeah, yeah. It had, a, it had absolute, a working economy absolutely. where you had laborers, and when the laborers needed to defend themselves, having no combat skills, they would contract out uh, assassins. Who that's, how, that's how I made all of them. And this the was, yeah. yeah, this was not how kill this it was necessarily yeah. meant to be played. This just kind of evolved from the players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. And... I was a fan of when they split the world into the. No, I, mean, well, I think we should purpose. dial it back a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we're we're getting ahead, right? Yep. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I do that. I do so that. you make it is you say it's medieval fantasy. Yeah. Typ- yeah. Your typical like Tolkien style fantasy. It's all isometric, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird for a for a MMO. Um, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Please. And well, because I I'd, I'd heard this because of course I'd heard the Ultima series on the NES. And then Brandon would not shut the fuck up about Ultima Online. Brandon, That's of all he fucking thing. talked about, yeah. Till finally, like, surprisingly, my mom allowed me to use her credit card and get a subscription. That was a hard sell for me oh, because I was, was I was sixteen sell. years old, and it was my mom mm-hmm. could not fathom. She was like, "You you're gonna pay fifteen dollars a month for a video mm-hmm. game?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I am. I'm going to pay you back. Like, I just don't have a credit card." Oh yeah, that that wonderful ploy. I've done that. Oh, I'll pay you back. <laughs> we had to, we had different parents. My, my parents oh, would really? have happily yeah. been like, uh, "Guess who's Ultima Online got canceled because you didn't give me fifteen dollars." Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm that parent. Yeah, well, and I will be too. Mm-hmm. So because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna support Henry's shitty video game habit. I, love <laughs> I supported my own shitty video game habit. Damn it! I love my son. If you borrow money, I want you to pay it back <laughs> to me as well. Well, I also really need the money too. Right. So. Right. I'm broke. <laughs> exactly. So I had I had dial up. When Whenever I was playing, so any phone call coming in oh, would God. just shut me down. Oh, so, man. so yeah, I going back. I was glad the, the the split worlds. Yeah, I spent all my time in Tremel. Me too. Because of that, because of so many disconnects. Well, okay, and so they were the, yeah, eventually. Okay. What happened was they split the they split the game into two mirror worlds. The game originally uh, was just one world where everything was, I shouldn't say everything, but um, PvP was everywhere. You could get ganked in the middle of nowhere, and it was likely. There were certain areas you just probably shouldn't go. Right. There were certain areas you were likely to die walking from one city to the next. Or one house to the next. one house to the next. I mean, it was was a dangerous world. It was. I was scared of Felucia. I was fucking scared to go to Felucia. You you damn well... (laughs) I got smart. (laughs) Just, I mean, there's at least any given time, there's like 20 assassins just hidden around the moon gate that you you come into. So you warp in and you do like I feel about East St. Louis. I'm scared (laughs) to go there. Well, I was one of the 20 assassins who was GM GM hiding, waiting around the the moon gate. We would call them moon gate noobs because uh, Tramelites would come to Felucia, I guess, just to see how the other side lives. Uh, uh, and the moment they'd pop, which 
cut him up and then just go back into the shadows and wait for another guy to come through. Didn't they make... back again? Because yeah, when you make a character, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You make a character and you start in what's the starting city? Is it Britain? Britain. Britain. Is it Britain or Moonglow? You can choose. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can choose. See, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember that. You can choose. Okay. And Moonglow's then, Moonglow's an island, so it's always rough when you choose Moonglow because it's like you're stuck there for a very yeah, long time. Yeah. Unless you have a friend who can gate you. Yeah. Yep. Because Which, when you, you, know, you you start as just like a commoner, and then basically there are so many different skills, and then you just start like you kind of you can explore a little bit and figure out what you what you want to do. Right. There's, uh, yeah. For as far as the mechanics, yeah. There's uh, a shit ton of skills. I don't know if anybody wrote down the number. I can remember most of but them. There's you a can, lot. You can of have, them. You yeah, can have there, seven. There are a lot of. Yeah, there are seven. You can get to a hundred. I think. Per, yes. Uh, at least in the, the time point. period we played, that's right. changed. Yes. I think it's new max is like one twenty five or something. Like so that. basically, bullshit. you have a maximum yeah. of seven hundred skill points. You could theoretically do fourteen skills at fifty, or yeah. all or, of them or, at and twenty. Or, or yeah, whatever, yeah, and so. they make most of the skills useful at around fifty, where they mm-hmm. where you could probably fend for yourself, or you could go and do a little mining or lumberjacking or whatever, and get something out of it. Mm-hmm. But we were, I was, I don't know about you guys, I was a purist. I oh, yeah. picked my seven, and I GM. That's the way to go. All yeah, you seven X GM. Yes. Like I mean, that's right. The way, that's because you go. do you do seven in one character, and then if you want other skills, you make yeah, another. Just make an character. You could spin yeah. up like five, wasn't it? Was it five or six characters you could? have i don't remember i don't really honestly recall how many you could have but i mean it was a sizable amount it's a handful but uh, so i only had i only had two tyronius tyronius was my craftsman and then i had a witch a witch slayer okay um i or had a mage slayer however you want to call it i had three or four characters two that i mainly played um one was my warrior he was an archer slash axe wielder. I mean, I forgot. I forgot that you were an archer, Keldar. Yeah, I forgot. Named after a character from David Edding's um, fantasy, the uh, Belgarian Belgarian books. Um, I named heard a lot about those, but I haven't read them. They're good. Um, they're real good. I recommend both series, the the Malorian and the Belgariad is what I recommend you read if you get a chance. Anyway, uh, and then I had one named Kelva. I started following a naming convention, K H E L uh-huh. something. And she was a tailor and um, fought with a staff weapon, I believe. But she also did fishing. She was my main crafting mm-hmm. person. So she was mining, fishing, uh, tailoring, and all the stuff to make armor. And uh, I would fish with her. And then you get the fish and you cut it into fish steaks. Uh-huh. And then you cook God, the fish steaks. Mm-hmm. Then you cook mm-hmm. the fish steaks. So many. Then you poison you grand, the fish steaks. Yes. You poison on the, the ground. Fish Leave steaks. them in town. <laughs> yeah, on the ground. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, everything leads to murder <laughs> online, I think. But you can also grandmaster cooking by just mm-hmm. cooking fish steaks and uh, that yep. UO macro, baby. I know. UO macro. But I, I, we had there was a macro program you could run for the more tedious tasks you could program it to do. The game was pretty grindy. Automated. And it was it's very grindy. Extremely. It's, because it's but, not a class-based game. Yeah, yeah. You, you never really had levels. You just worked on your skills. Yeah. Um, so because of that, it, you would raise your skills there was a formula where like once you got to like an item could take you to 40 percent. you get a new item that takes you to 45 percent. right other item and and there was so there was this this tier system where you had to make you had to do harder and harder things tasks to to increase Mm -hmm. your skill um and then at different levels it would also take uh more and more failures versus successes to raise the skill so you would have to do them uh exponentially more frequently to to Mm -hmm. even get like a 0.1 percent well and adam Mining, uh, mining is a good example because what you do is you buy a boat and right. you sail to the north, and the mountains in the north can be accessed. You can mine those mountains from, from your boat, boat. Mm-hmm. and then you you go up and down the cliff face mining, and you stop, hit the thing, and the, you stack ore, and you get your stacks going, and then they automatically everything you pull from the thing goes to its stack hmm. and so i would program and, but we played this game at work right at apex where we at apex where we would be there for eight to twelve hours a day yep 
I was actually not unattended macroing. Unattended macroing was not allowed. And if you got caught doing you get it, fucking banned. you get banned. Well, but attended. <laughs> it took a long it time. It took a while. It took a really long time. But attended macroing was totally fine. And that's what I always did, which was I'm already at work. I'm just going to start my macro and watch it. Watch let it. Let it go. And if uh, I actually had some GMs pop in a few times and say see something if you were to there. me yeah. to see if I was there. And if, if, you, if they pop in, they just. They're right there in front of you. If you do not answer them, you're done. Yeah. But I never got banned. I always managed to be there to answer their questions and say, yeah, I'm here. I'm just whatever. But Speaking of GMs, GM Glacius, if you're listening, send me a message. I'm going to fight you in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still think about you, and I fucking hate you. <laughs> uh, this is coming from a guy who was in UO jail a lot. I was in UO jail like well, at least once a month. That's why I said they will ban you, but they really want that fifteen dollars oh, really, yeah. really bad. Yeah. So you could get you'll get out. You're just locked up. I never got banned, but I was in UO jail constantly. It felt like because I unattended Mac Road all the time. Like I would if there was uh, if there was an exploit, I knew about it. I'm on it. Like uh, there was exploits how you could like break into people's houses. Yeah. Oh, stacking gold. Yeah, yep. yeah. And I would I'd do that, that shit. I mean, anytime <laughs> we worked with a guy uh, named Nick, uh, and he was like really into like the exploits. Like he would, he was re- and he'd share that information with me because we went to school together. Mm-hmm. And it's like we would so at school we would just scheme together. Like it would just we would just sit down and like just devise these evil plans, and then we'd go to work and exact these evil plans. Mm-hmm. Um, and it. It was just Ultima online for like three years of my life was like probably sixty percent. Oh yeah, of like what, just what, what I did. Jacob mm-hmm. said. Like it was the wild west of MMOs. Back yeah, that's a pretty day. accurate. Yeah, because there just were no rules governing like PvP. Uh, there were there were uh, safe havens like towns. Uh, guards. Yeah, were yeah. Mm-hmm. If you shouted for guards, they would appear and and attack whoever. Vendor Whatever by the well, criminal if was a criminal. Uh, yeah. Made it into town somehow without getting killed by the guards and goes to the bank to get their stuff or to try and pick your pocket while you're at the bank. Uh, if you know, mm-hmm. if if they score a hit on you or get take an offensive action, a recorded action against you, and you type the word guards, they teleport. They just poof appear. Guards appear. And One shot kill. You. They slaughter you. As a as and a then you get to loot their shit and then you can get guards called on you for doing that. <laughs> you know, as a PvP who I had a character who was perma red, I'd like to go over the reputation system mm-hmm. at some point. Uh perma red essentially meant that I was tagged a murderer. And if some anyone called the guards when I was around, I would instantly die. One of my favorite things to do... I know, you murder one person and they call you a murderer <laughs> murder. for the rest of the game. <laughs> it's amazing how they like let you like just wait off a murder sentence in that game. Like If you kill one guy, it's actually not that big a deal. You kill seven and they won't let you forget about mm-hmm. it. Ever. <laughs> but one of my favorite things to do would be to sneak into a low population city and kill somebody at the bank. Like That was a goal, to just like kill somebody in town and like get away with it. Uh, uh, it happened maybe zero times, uh, but it was <laughs> but it was always fun. Well, and what I love so after you've picked up your skills and you're out in the world and you're learning your craft and you're trying to fight or you're doing whatever, then you then things start to get a little bit harder mm-hmm. and uh, you start making your way into the big boy world. And what happens uh, when you get into a fight? Usually against a player killer, a red, as we called you, you. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm scum, I realize. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And I love it. They were usually good enough to one-shot kill you. They would be hiding. With the poison, yeah. Yeah, or there'd be some lethal poison on a dagger Mm -hmm. or something, and you are going to. (laughs) You're pretty much going to die. And the way that it works is, or if you fight... A horde, any kind of monster, any kind of enemy, or whatever. At lower levels, you could get killed by a deer. Right. Uh, or a goat, or which a did goat, happen to be like happened. the first week. <laughs> uh, but once you've died, you your body falls and you become a ghost. And uh, one of the longstanding jokes, memes, whatever, it probably still survives in some people's memories today, is when you're a ghost and you're walking around in the world trying to talk to the living, all they see is, ooh. <laughs> bunch of O's on the screen. Uh, You only had so much time to get to a point where you could be resurrected if you didn't have any friends that could heal res you with bandages or whatever. You got to run to town. You got to get rezzed. 
You got, and if you don't have gear in the bank, you got to run naked as hell all the way back (laughs) to your body. Eventually, your body decays to a pile of bones. Uh Then it turns into a smaller pile of bones, and then it's gone, and all your shit is laid bare for the rest of the world. Well, and yeah, exactly. And it's like even when you're a pile of bones, all of a sudden anybody can loot you, exactly, and, and with no penalties. So what would happen is like sometimes, like when I would die in the wilderness, eventually it got to the point where I was like, never mind, I died. All that shit is gone. And I would just like go back to my house and put new gear on because the there's it would get to the point where if I would die in the wilderness, I would run back to my corpse. And by the time I got there, there were five dudes just standing around the corpse waiting for it to turn to bones. Right. And yeah. then uh, essentially one of them would be like, eh, shrug and then kill me because right. I was fucking uh, absolutely naked. Also, there was the infamous res kill, yeah. which would be you'd be out in the middle of nowhere. You'd be in a fight. You die. You're a ghost. The party walks up. And you're talking to them, and you say, ooh, 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 what you're saying is, hey, can I get a res? They know what you're asking for. They see your body. They see your ghost. They know what you're... Well, they can't see your ghost, right, unless... Until, until you start talking. You start... Yeah. Is it, it that it, or There's is, a skill called spirit, spirit speak. speak as spirit well. speak. Spirit yeah. speak That's allows you to understand the ooze, uh-huh. yes, but yes. a ghost is invisible until it starts ooing. No. A ghost was invi- You had to go into combat mode as ghost, and then oh, you'd be right? visible. That's what it was. Okay. But anyway, you make yourself visible to someone, and, ooh, 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 and mm-hmm. they know you're asking. There's a body. There's a ghost. Put two and two together. They want to res. So they res you and then kill you <laughs> immediately. And then <laughs> Easy wait, kill. Easy kill. And then wait for your bones to show up and take all your shit. So the strategy was... Don't leave the house without anything you can't afford to lose. Right. That, it got to it got to a point unless where, you're good, unless you're a good fighter, and yeah. someone Even tries then. to get up and gank you. You might stand a better chance, but the odds are you're going to lose. The only those time, reds ran in parties; they ran in groups. The only time I would do it is when I was like, I wanted people to come at me. Like that's when I would like equip a magical weapon or right. something like right. that. I, I never kept. Uh, ma- any magical equipment I found that was awesome, I never kept on me. As soon as I got it, I would go straight to the bank, put it in the bank, That's and smart. never use it again. <laughs> right? This is where I go uh, to because, look at the things that because I Because I was, yeah, I was too afraid of losing it. And I never used it. Uh-huh. So. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, and if you GM fencing, for example, which I had a GM fencer. Was it also your fisher by chance? Yes. Because a fisherman, a GM fisherman GM fencer could beat the fuck out of some Body with a fishing pole. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> I do remember uh, that. It was and I carried, crazy. I carried a Chris that uh, wavy bladed, mm, the, the necromancer blade. blade. Yeah, um, evil I got, blade. I had some friends who were poisoners. Yes, grandmaster poisoners. Yes. and you always get I had that them friend as well. Poison. Yeah, <laughs> get them to poison. What about the Frank Chris. on the show? He yeah, we have the, talked about Frank. He was your poisoner. He, he was, was a poisoner, poisoner. and uh, we very did. rare GM poisoner. But the Chris, yes, very. That is that's a difficult skill. to It's also a very dangerous skill because you die a lot you trying will. to poison you poison yourself uh-huh. uh but he became gm poisoning and that was just invaluable dude was making hand money hand over fist and of course with us he's just doing it giving for it nothing. for free yeah, have but, all uh, these kegs of deadly I, poison yes <laughs> yeah i bring him my uh chris and uh he poisons it and the chris is super fast and if you're gm fencing you're just like tink 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 most things just drop yeah, to the ground because it and didn't die. matter uh the the speed of the weapon was key in mm-hmm. poisoning. Yeah, yep. because it didn't matter how hard you hit with your weapon; it was all about hitting quick. Yeah, uh, whenever you had a poison weapon. Do you remember when they changed poisoning because they they thought that it was too powerful? It was poison was yeah. was op, especially deadly poison. Like I remember, because every time you would hit somebody, the poison would be reapplied. Mm. They eventually fixed that in one of the pat in one of the updates to where it only applied poison on the first hit. So what I did was I would roll with a stack of like 50 katanas and each katana had deadly poison on it. I would chase dudes and like hit them once with the katana, drop it, pull another one out of my bag, hit it with them again, <laughs> drop it, grab another one out of my bag, hit them again. Like, I mean, like scorched fucking earth. Yeah, because you knew, you also knew tons of Grandmaster blacksmiths. Yeah. We had two or three of them. I was one. I, I actually had one too. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I made a Willie Nelson looking character named Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Buddy. Yeah. yeah. I totally remember Grandmaster Buddy. Minor, Grandmaster God. Blacksmith, Fishing. I play that game a lot. I did too. I'm like you. And I was married with children and had a family, and I played that game nonstop. 
but, Buddy, but we had the luxury of playing at work. Yeah. So it was yeah, like totally different. Yeah. 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 I didn't have to make time. I'd come home and play, but if I couldn't one night, it was no big deal because I know as soon as I get, to, I can't wait to get to work tomorrow and play Ultima. Dude, I that the summer between high school and college was a mate because that was like. 100% Ultima online time. Mm-hmm. Like it was like I, I would sleep at work under my desk with yep. my headset on. And like when the, like while I'm sleeping, I'm running unintended macros, leveling my <laughs> skill. And I would just wake up every time the phone would ring. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have school. Uh, and my girlfriend would not have sex with me, so it was just straight up. Just I live at no Apex. reason not to do this. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I, it was great. Yeah. My girlfriend wouldn't have sex with me. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great because you know what? I, I don't think I was missing much there anyway. <laughs> well, I had those. I had those. I, I remember this because this is what started Bob McChristian waking you up in the mornings on you Saturday. And early on Saturday mornings because I had those big green couches in my office and. You you two would crash on there, and then John would come in and start blasting Du Hast by Rammstein. <laughs> yeah, that, get up in their faces and, and uh-huh. fucking bitch wizard is Rammstein. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because uh, we would I'm just, just thinking live about there. his goth phase. Man, you you making me say that just of the pictures of him with his little spike collars and shit on. <laughs> <laughs> the last time that the man. Uh, I'm sorry, John, but the last the last time we were on, I made mention of uh, his painted fingernails, and he didn't even like say anything. I was I was mm-hmm. I was hoping that he, I was hoping that we could get a, a conversation going about back when John painted his fingernails. I think he knew better. Black. Like if I say anything back, I got a new title. <laughs> I used to put I used to put clear coat on mine because how do I not remember this? Was this before I met him? Um, I don't think so. I thought he had some uh back in the Apex days. Fuck, I don't maybe remember. I'm maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I remember he had great big hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had some great hair. A lot of big, big old hair. Big John Fro. Yeah. Yeah. Those were the days. <laughs> anyway. Those were the days. Back when you rocked the Andy Samberg and his SNL days shaggy hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, John Turley, I love you. We do too. I love you too, buddy. I love you too, John. Yeah, you sure you do. Tyler. I do. I don't want to. I just like trash. John. Shit. I don't want to be the only because one loves... not loving him. So I love you too. John. <laughs> <laughs> it's just if he didn't love uh, what's his fuck Han Solo so much, we wouldn't get into it. This is all basically because of his love. So Harrison Ford. Let's, Harrison Ford. Let's, let's, that's, let's, that's his name. Whatever. Let's divorce <laughs> the actor from the character. <laughs> you realize that I go by Solo as my name on everything, and I literally have a picture of. Han Han Solo as my avatar on Facebook. This is yeah, what, he, he's dead now. It's fine. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> this is where Tyler reveals he's GM Glacius. <laughs> oh, they're gonna fight. All right. What 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 do we talk about next? Is it is it housing want, time or? Well, we I want to I want to hear some of your uh, fondest memories from UO because I remember one uh, one day I'm just in town doing banking. A uh, vendor by the bank cards uh, again. What are yeah. you doing? Banking? Yeah. <laughs> I'm banking, good sir. I'm like, I've been out slaying dragons. I'm depositing like bags of treasure with swords sticking out of them into the bank. Well, you'd always impress the shit uh, on me with your tele- <laughs> your wizard and teleporting to little out of the way places and then just like demolishing epic dragons. Oh yeah, I, my 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 deal was uh, I I didn't I didn't set up macros or anything, but I I was always trying to beat the AI. Mm-hmm. So I would I would find a spot uh like the perfect spot that they couldn't I could, get you but yeah you could i could blink them. over to yeah and i would just corp fo- corp pour the fuck mm-hmm. out of some dragons mm-hmm. and just rinse and repeat but uh corp pour being uh energy bolt yeah spell, energy right? bolt oh yeah. fucking uh, one of the corp pour voss flam voss flam was flame strike mm-hmm. what was teleport teleport was the thing too uh, calor pour calor yeah, that's wow. right damn because when you memory. would cast these spells your Use. your character like Let's words would appear right. up above your head, like they're yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Spells were it wasn't just magic. You had MP, but you had to have the proper reagents. Reagents. Yeah. You Regs. had to have. You had to know the spell. You had to have the spell in the spell book, and yeah, your character would say them as well. Yeah, because uh, like being a wizard fucking took like five skills. Oh yeah, yeah. Med- yeah. Meditation, magic, and then scholar, a bunch it of was, other shit. It yeah. was 
some scholar or some, some scholar type skill or something. Meditation you had to be, got your MP back. Yeah. Uh, spell casting was actually casting Being the spell. able to cast a spell, right. yeah. Um, and then majory there, was... Majory, was yeah. Was the, the actual damage, I think. I and, think so, yeah. And then... Uh, uh, Wrestling was a good one lore, for mages there because was there, they have weapons. Was it arcane lore or just lore or something like that? So one of the knowledge skills... Uh, Increased, yeah, increased something. You know, there did you were need alchemy the... so you can make reagents or some? Sh- we, some sh- we, no, we you use, use alchemy as a as a as a. Um, you would use reagents in alchemy. Yeah, you would make, like, I, make I, no, I, did, I didn't. I just bought them. I just bought them. But you could be an al- You would be an alchemist and make healing potions and explosion potions okay. and but all that. I lived off the land, and yeah. by that I mean <laughs> ev- almost everything I got was from corpses. <laughs> <laughs> just a pile of dead bodies. Yeah, just you know, live off the land. You know, just wait till a guy comes out of his house with a bunch of shit, and then kill him and take it. Take Good old frontier murderer like yeah. you. Yeah. Almost heard about in Low House on the Prairie, right. but didn't quite. But, I'm uh, Packer from Cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'm in town one day, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, this line of of people uh, in black robes. <clears throat> With golden, like solid gold halberds, just walk into town. Just, uh, you know, uh, just a ho- whole roll of them, big line of them. Yeah. And uh, they walk straight through town up into the castle and they take over the castle. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, this was the launch of, I think it was the, the Blackthorn. Oh my uh, God. Blackthorn. Yeah, yeah. You were there for yeah. that? That's, yeah. That's around the time I quit. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. That was after I quit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just uh, just shit like that. They, they would have uh, after that. They would have monster attacks in yeah. town. Like uh, what is the mining town up north? I can't think of the name of it. I can't. Uh, remember. I can't remember it either. It's like Aminos or something like that. Uh, anyway, no idea. Uh, it's one of the most northern towns. Well, I uh, should I, know it. I had I, that map committed to right, memory. Yeah. Sure. I hadn't logged into my uh, my mule character, which is the the name, the term for uh, just uh, just what someone was super a strong. Well, what I would call my main. But yeah, yeah. Your, your main. <laughs> uh, just your crafting character, uh-huh. your your resource gathering character. Um, so I hadn't logged into him in a your while. Target. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So I log in, and all of a sudden there's fucking orcs everywhere. There's, like, some kind of weird uh, automaton creature uh, that just instantly hones in on me and kills me and my mule. Like, I had an actual donkey, <laughs> like a pack mule. No, donkey! Uh, <laughs> it just got slaughtered. Voiced yeah. by Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you you play Shrek. You role play to Shrek. Right? I'm making waffles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah, normally normally towns were your sanctuary. You could go there if you were being followed by monsters, just go into town, they would follow you in, call, call the, for the guards, guards. dead. Mm-hmm. Uh so uh so yeah, they took that away. Uh both you know, the castle You couldn't call the guards? No, you, you, there were no guards. Everybody was dead. God, that sounds like I did a not... fucking wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> I did not play during this. This time. was in Trammel too. Yeah, yeah. I, but I heard about it. I had read on read that that was happening. And before I started playing, um, I so I missed that. And before I started playing, uh, was when uh, someone actually killed Lord Britain. Yes, yes, <laughs> which yes. I remember hearing about. Which that was, was a fluke. A uh, fluke, uh, fluke. Somebody somebody asked him at a Dragon Con. He was speaking for some space event. Uh, cause Gary, uh, yeah, uh, cause he's, he's very into, uh, uh, privatized space. Yeah. Travel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so, uh, he was at Dragon Con speaking on that. And, and he was like the main dev of the game. Right. The main creator. Right. And he played Lord Britain. Mm-hmm. Uh, the so, king. Right. In the the game. king. Yes. So, uh, so he's, uh, he's talking about space and of course, uh, any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, what about that time you got killed by, uh, <laughs> uh I saw him again. The uh, next that person year. was me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw him again the next year, uh, at, at Dragon Con, a uh, similar, uh, similar speech. Uh, and, uh, the moderator 
specifically mentioned no UO question <laughs> oh, uh, wow. before the event. So. What well, was his response when he was asked? Was he like, uh, "I'm here to talk about space"? Yeah, which, kind of. He, uh, yeah, he kind of. He didn't really talk about it. He was. Uh, he started crying. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> he, his mood just completely <laughs> darkened. Hang he on, flipped because... the table, ran out. <laughs> you find me Joe Kiabi, and we'll fucking launch that motherfucker into space. God, I wish I'd killed him. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I don't remember his exact words. He kind of gave a, a non-answer, like just. Uh, gotcha. Just, yeah. So in the game, we got to clarify this a little bit. He, I mean, most of this has been said, but this was the main guy of the game. He plays Lord Britain. He's in the game, in game, yes. giving a speech and right. addressing. It's a part his of kingdom. A, it's addressing his, his kingdom. kingdom. <laughs> part of this big, part of this big event, this big player inclusive event. Yeah. Where there, there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of players gathered outside his castle, and he's giving his speech, and someone pops in and kills him. <laughs> Pops yeah. right in and just kills him. Right Literal in the, assassination. Right in the face. <laughs> regicide right in the face. Reap and what you sow, Lord Britain. It turned out it was a it was a glitch. They had forgotten to turn on his invulnerability that the GMs have where you can't touch him, you can't hurt him, whatever. They didn't turn it on, and someone thought, I'm going to give this give a, a shot. shot. And sure enough, Man. sure enough, they k- killed the king right there, and it was like nobody knew what to do. It's and that is, awesome that, shit, is one of the, I know. that is one of the I love it. video game history. Oh, yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. like, you know. That's a moment. That's something you tell people uh-huh. about because I, it was I just know who unprecedented. That was. That yeah, was one I, of the things I, that if you when you say the name, it's going to sound familiar to me because that name, the name of the person that killed uh, him, was really echoed to every, I mean, it's everybody's hero. Is it Lord British, Lord British, Lord British. Yeah, that's the um, that's the story that Nick, who I mentioned earlier, who I would scheme with. That's how he brought me into the game because it took a lot of convincing. Because like I don't know, man. Because I was I liked Final Fantasy and I like turn based games, uh, RPGs. This was something completely new to me. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest, I don't really know of a lot of games really similar to, to UO outside of UO. There aren't any. But I, I remember see. being on the fence for a long time, and then he, he told me that story, and I was like, oh, someone killed the king? Yeah. He was like, yeah, someone yeah. killed the king. I was like, do you think we could kill the king someday? And he was like, <laughs> maybe. I was like, I'm yes. in. Yes, my son. Take like, my hand. Right? And yeah. And I will lead you. He was my Sidious, essentially. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, my favorite moment from UO, and Dave, you were probably involved in this one. Uh, mm-hmm. We were, well, there was a huge, huge problem with land. So you could have a house mm-hmm. in this game. Right. You could buy a you deed. You could buy a, a deed, and it would be for a house, a keep, a castle, and it all just depended on whether or not there was enough room to place. Rain, rains? Yeah, that rains, sounds right. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. Uh, the murder. Whether or not, if there was enough, the houses were a certain number of the king. <laughs> the houses were a certain number of squares on the mat, on the board, right. on the game board, and if there were no trees or rocks, rocks or, or animals hills. or hills <laughs> yeah. in the way, you would as long as you had the deed, you click double click on the deed, and it would show you like a ghost, a ghost image, a image of the house, mm-hmm. and you would set it. And if the land was acceptable to place, if it wasn't inside the city limits and it wasn't in a restricted area, da 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 da. It would just pop up, boom, boom you, you have, have a house. house, there's a key in your bag, and now you've got a house. Congratulations. Uh, and houses are expensive. Yes. And oh, yeah. land, but people had so much money in this game because of murder. Yeah. And dungeon crawling and yeah. le- legit and often, ways, too. often guilds uh, would pool their money yeah. together to f- to buy castles. To buy castles. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and you could make copies of keys and give it to friends and so, everything right. like that. So and you anyway, could set up vendors inside your house or your keep yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and land being at a premium. Because uh, it, it was overpopulated. The server yeah, was overpopulated. Yeah, it was way overpopulated. Not, everyone didn't have a house. It was a special thing. Correct. You, you had to earn it, and you had to get lucky enough to find a place to put it. Or yeah. if you don't log in, into your house, go into your walk into the door and unlock it. Your house does it refreshes every time you go in. Right. And if there was a set time limit for different types of houses, castles, keeps, whatever, of the, the decay rate. Yeah. And so if you didn't go into your house and refresh it, it would start to decay. And you could click on the sign on the house, and there were different descriptions of the house as to whether or not it was in right. its state. It'll give you an idea how much yeah. longer that house had to so stay. So they had it all figured out to where if you click on it and it says... This house is falling apart. You knew that it was probably within the next, the next two to three so. hours or right. something like right, that, right. that this house is going to fall. When it falls, two things have to happen. If you want to use the, the the land for your house, yes, two things have to happen. Number one, you got to clear 
the person's shit out of the way because the house would decay, but all of the things inside the house would stay. Right. And this would be free loot, essentially. Treasure chests just packed full of gold yeah. and, and ore and wood. I mean, you could put an unlimited amount of stuff in these boxes. <laughs> yeah. And you couldn't move them. Uh-huh. It, so you'd have to fucking start throwing start shit, throwing out, of shit out of the chest yeah. and clearing that off the ground. I mean, you could literally not have one piece of ore. No, you couldn't the, have a single gold coin nothing on the footprint on of the, the footprint where, where you want to put your house or it will not place. So It'll say something blocking your way from doing this. So meanwhile... That, Sorry to keep jumping in here, but no, like, right. but while people are clearing this out, chaos is erupting around the the fallen house. We found a plot of land that was all but it had a house on it, but it was it was a castle, and it was about to fall down. and And a decaying castle was like that's a holy grail. That's that the shit holy does grail not because you could either put down a castle or you could put down a neighborhood, a neighborhood <laughs> of tw- twenty houses or whatever. We found a decaying castle and it was about to collapse. So we called in everyone. We Everybody. had Dave, Nick, Bob. That was a day where everyone. it was like put the phones on do not disturb. This was we're camping this deal. house. We like you're getting out. paid to do this right now. We <laughs> camped out this castle. Our bosses were playing. We had this thing going. The owners. The owner yeah. of the company. Uh, this is the same guy that said, put that customer on hold and capture the goddamn flag. <laughs> right. This, this time it was put them on hold for we're, the next two hours while we camped this house. The guys that didn't play Ultima, yeah, fuck you guys. Answer the phone. We got a thing. <laughs> uh, we all had our computers going. We were all communicating through the building. We're standing here waiting for this castle to collapse. And the thing is, it didn't look like there were that many people around, but the, they were all All hidden. invisible. All of hidden. them were invisible or hidden. And if you don't move... You'll stay invisible forever. Or until there is a detect or hidden until skill there's someone, someone can use. Or so a reveal spell. We would have people running around running detect hidden spells. And all of the people that were hidden, then we'd call in Dave and the PK guys that would that were fine with killing <laughs> the people. The real hard hitters. <laughs> <laughs> to come in. Nick had like six dragons, dragons with him. He was a tamer. He was a, he was a tamer. <laughs> oh, had, that was always the skill I wanted to do. Yeah, Before I quit, I had started on taming. He but, had six yeah. dragons with him, and he would just kill, and it, they would be gone. We had this thing ready. As soon as it fell, it was... It was Christmas or Black Friday at Walmart. It was, <laughs> it was madness. We, it was madness. There was murder afoot. I took a I took a couple of murder counts that day. Yeah, uh, everybody uh, did. We we were grabbing as much crap as we could. We'd have we'd have people that were uh, opening moon gates for us. So you grab a whole bunch of shit and hit the moon gate and get it out of there and drop it anywhere. Just get Just it out wherever. of the way. We finally got the plot cleared off, and I was I had one of the deeds. I had one of the castle deeds, and I kept clicking and clicking. It would say, something's in your way, something's in your way. And finally, once I clicked that button, and a castle popped up. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I got it. It wasn't my castle. <laughs> it was somebody else's castle. Damn. I was Damn. so Damn. upset. We fought for, yeah. it was it was ours. It was a fun day, though, It still. was a wonderful day. And it was so, even though we didn't win, mm. there was... We we got so much shit, got a lot and of I shit. killed so many people. Yeah, was, <laughs> I didn't even want a house. It was just like, yeah, it was chop, chop. Uh, John Turley was not playing Ultima, but he will remember that day because yeah. nothing got done that day. No, no, but it was so, shop it was, shut down. It was just so much fun because, man, I was I was all in. I didn't think about anything that mm-hmm. day except let's get this castle. Let's get this castle built. Mm-hmm. We never could do it. We didn't do it. None of the other guys could get the castle up in time either, but uh, that that's my fondest memory of that game. Was we that eventually day. all got individual housing. <laughs> yeah, there. I had a keep so. at one point. Well, that's what happened was because of the housing and the land shortage, that was another reason they created the Felucia Trammel thing. Because right. when they created it, Felucia, it, it was one world. It was Felucia. Right. Then they split it and made a mirror image of it, the exact same size and shape. With no PvP. Care Bear Land. Called Trammel. It was also known as Care Bear Land. But that opened up a shitload of land. Because it was no there was no housing on it. There was no housing. And when and you could take the deeds that you buy over here and Moongate over to Trammel and put a house down if you knew a spot. We were all we all went around and found spots in Felucia that we liked. And then I'm gonna put my house in Trammel here. 
And I was the other way around. I waited until one of the houses in Felucia collapsed. Right. Because some people just moved. They're like, fuck this yeah, murder. Right. I'm going to Care Bear Land. Yeah. And I just scouted a home. But what was Felucia. cool is we had no less than than 12 houses at this point scattered all about both realms. So it's like you needed to go into Trammel for something. Well, you, here's my key. You can go use my forge and my whatever right. you need. and uh, But that's one of the reasons they created the other world was so that you could put houses down and there would be more room for everybody. And uh, it worked out pretty well in that regard. But part of the fun was you in Felucia before they did that if you if you got a house placed you you had accomplished something oh yeah you were you were you a big were deal lucky. you you i had yeah. a deed i had a deed for uh for a house but i never never found a plot of land really i had to settle for a boat so i just got a boats boat boats were good and, boats are nice though stored all my stuff on the boat yep. you just boats were stealable um and yeah, if, it, i remember my friend Alistair said the first time he'd saved up and got a boat went to go place it opened up his bag no deed deed was no longer I there. Fucking, that's I'd like to if you don't mind, I like to like just kinda go down my misdeeds of Oklahoma. Because like <laughs> it is like it is like a slippery slope where like it all started where I was playing with uh some people at Apex and I remember uh that we worked with somebody named Corey, uh who took things who took games very seriously. I love Corey, but Corey, Corey um if if Corey was better at a game than you, you would definitely know about yeah, it. He would. he would tell you about <laughs> it. Yeah, he would. And he um, had started playing Ultima Online about the same time as I had, uh, but he like really knuckled down and like raised some fighting skills really fucking fast. Got some, did some dungeons really early. Got a bunch of money really early. Meanwhile, what I was interested in on my main character was hiding. That's really because mm-hmm. I figured if I can get hiding up to a hundred percent. And I can get stealth to 100%. I can do whatever I want in this game the eventually. Hi- the higher you had your hiding and stealth, the more you could move undetected. Completely undetected. Yeah, you, and could, I, you could just walk around hidden and not worry about getting seen. Right. Unless someone was trying to detect you. Which was really appealing to me. That's how I wanted to play the game. I wanted to play it as a stealthy character. I never wanted to be detected. Um, so I was working on that, and I was working on thieving skills, like snooping, where I could like look inside someone's bag to see what they had, and then of course, pickpocketing. You were having fun with the game. I was having fun <laughs> yeah. with the game. Yeah, I was, play, I was playing the game that, you know, the way yeah. I wanted to play it. Which I think, uh, Ultima Online is great about that, because we could play the game however the fuck we wanted to play yeah. it. You, yeah, you, you cooked, Tyler. Mm. It was crafting. It was. It was. It was. You could. You could play it as a role playing. Yeah. Like a serious these and thous. Right, you're right. Talking and you know that's what I meant earlier when I said there was something for everyone. You yeah, don't absolutely. really judge because honestly, that guy that's over there cooking, you I, want him you on your need team. Him. I need his fish you steaks. Want, you want his fish steaks. Cooking, tailoring, carpentry. Lumberjacking, tinker, tinker, tinkering, 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 yeah. Yeah. tinkering. We get set traps God, on chests and good. stuff. Yeah, uh, later on one. in the the Blackthorns uh, expansion, you uh, you could do you could create automatons. Like you could make a golem. I actually uh, made. Go- I had a yeah. GM tinker, and I started making golems in the Blackthorn. I think I guess I did play a little bit in the Blackthorn right. days because I do remember making golems. They were powerful too. Yeah. Back to uh, yeah. Corey. Uh, so I was working on all these hiding and thievery skills, and he was like breaking in money from dungeons. I remember uh, he bought a boat. Uh, and he was making a really big deal about this boat because, like, I didn't have a boat. No one really that we were playing. Like, I mean, some of like the 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 owners and some of the day crew, they had like a foothold. They got in earlier than we did, so they some of them had like some nice stuff. We did not. Yeah, we I were the boat. fucking scrubs. I had a boat for my miner and stuff, but that was because we were we had been at it for a while. We'd been at it since the house. We right. played Ultima at the house on Kentucky. That's where we back started. when the business was in a house. Yeah, yeah. So that's how long we'd been at it before you had much long. Been. Much yeah. longer than me. Go ahead, sorry. So I remember he bought he he <clears throat> bought the deed to a boat uh, in in town. Went over to a river. Uh, I we were all following him, and I remember he used the deed on the water. And when you do that, a boat appears and a key appears in your pack. And I was thinking, you know what? I've had enough of Corey for today. I think I'm going to just try to steal this key. I'm not. I'm a low level pickpocket, but I'm just going to, a key is very light and that comes into play. It's easier to pickpocket light things. Mm. Stones. So yes, yeah. it was weighed in stones. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So I remember opening awesome. his pack and waiting, just waiting for him to place the boat. Uh, I opened the pack undetected. He placed the boat. I see the key steal yoink. And then he go, he doesn't notice. And he goes, 
goes to unlock the boat and he can't get on. Because once you have the key. <laughs> I know. It was just once, like, oh, it felt so good. <laughs> once you have the key, it's I, your I boat. I hope he didn't know. I hope this is this is you telling well, him about it. No, he, knew, he knew because I got on the boat yeah. and then I took off. <laughs> 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 Once you have the key, it's your boat. It's your boat. That's it's your boat. Oh, you can you can deed it back in as soon as you have the key. You could double click that key, and, and the deed to the paper. boat goes into your bag, and it is yours. You if you get that key, it's your boat. It's your house. The key was the the key, oh, and uh, yeah, you. I did. Oh. I gave it back to him, uh, but like <laughs> so but after after you. like a little bit. <laughs> Corey had a temper. Too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was mad. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, he was mad. He was cause, mad. Because Corey is one of the smartest people yeah, absolutely. I know. Yeah, he really and is. And when you pull one over him, he, ooh, he gets <laughs> mad. <laughs> and I, I don't know that I have... I've seen Corey pretty mad. I've known him a long time, and I think that's in the top three. <laughs> I, I remember him getting really mad at the at Brandon of Axler fame. <laughs> you know what? You know where I'm going I to think this. I do. I think I do. Brandon. <laughs> oh, well, we're working at Apex. Brandon did a Subway run. He got us all. He went to go get Subway sandwiches for us. And I remember Brandon came back with Corey's sandwich, and it had olives on it. And Corey fucking went ballistic on Brandon. He was like, what are these? Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. Like, he had the sandwich open, like, in Brandon's face. He's like, what are these? And Brandon's like, olives? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they're olives. I asked for no olives. It was a very, like, let me speak to your manager moment. <laughs> Again, I love Corey, but it was like he's, one of those. He's his coworker, like, not his boss. It was like, Wow. Oh, I just would have smacked out of his hands. <laughs> Brandon was really Brandon had struggled with that. Every, one. Everyone <laughs> took a turn at Corey yeah, yeah. once, just because he was that easy to make mad. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> so that was that was the beginning of my criminal career in UO because I got a big rush out of that, and mm-hmm. I was like, "This is fun! Like, what what else can I do?" That and there fun? were no punishments, no repercussions. I mean, at if least he not in game, me, it would have been. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't catch me. But so. you you. That's exactly the point. Mm-hmm. It, you could do whatever the fuck made you happy. So, if, mm. it, the only thing they didn't have was whores and sex. That was that. No, was that the was there. <laughs> that, that was uh. there. Just weren't NPCs. There was definitely oh. cyber sex that happened on Ultima Online. Well, yeah, yeah. I, a friend yeah. told me that, that. that. Well, that's how Alistair <laughs> got a lot of good items. He would. He had his main. It was a male. Made a female character. The which he would seduce neckbeards into giving him gold <laughs> and items, transfer them over to his other character, and then just go about it, go along his way. Would, would like, I wonder, would, <laughs> would uh, somebody playing and given an item to this new female player? Uh, See, I put later, it on my brother's account. Yeah, later. This is fun. Uh, <laughs> would that person oh, then man, later my boobs see hurt. Uh, <laughs> some dude, some random dude walking around with that like <laughs> dragon scale armor that you just gave that chick or something? Because yeah, I mean, it would have the <laughs> crafted by. Yeah, would, would anybody be like, wait a minute? <laughs> that was one I gave you. Uh, people got married in Ultima. Yeah. They mm-hmm. would have wedding ceremonies. Yeah. And they would like invite fucking people to these things. Yes. And they would yeah. set up a big event when they put out like you know um barrels all lined in flowers all decorated and all decorated yeah. and they would yeah. have wedding ceremonies and they they would consider those characters to be married in game and gms would give them rings that they would yes yeah. gms they had wedding rings and you could find the wedding ring was uh blessed yep you didn't lose the wedding ring if you died or whatever right. you couldn't like take it off a corpse we, uh, we actually Alist- tried that's yeah. what yeah. alistair did one time he had a pretty nice house that was our guild house whatever where we all in, in Felucia. So I go to Felucia was to go to his house and then immediately leave again. But he hosted a wedding there one time. Like the two the two players and then the priest who was marrying them and then a few people for the ceremony and then him. They come into his house while they're doing it upstairs in his in his garden, his roof garden. As soon as they get up there and start, he lays down the boxes, traps everybody in. Because you then, could, as the owner <laughs> of the house, you could lock items into place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, if you put a box there, normally somebody could move it. But if, if you, you own the it, house, yeah, and you own the house and you lock it, it's not going anywhere. This yeah. item if it's is locked, locked in a door, yeah, you're not. <laughs> 
leaving. He <laughs> banned the priest who he who was the the formidable one, which was also something you could do if you owned a house. Mm-hmm. You could yeah. you could I say uh, I ban thee, yep. and a cursor would appear, and you click on the the tar- the mm-hmm. target player. You want to never be able to enter your house again. Yeah, they'd be yep. they'd so pop right outside. outside yeah. and he just walked around like it was the fucking shining with like a poison weapon, and like they were running trying to fight him, and mm-hmm. he just. Bruh, Kills everybody slowly mm. one by one. Oh, the no, bride no, 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 is last, no. and the bride is mm. like, "Please don't kill me. I'm yours." <laughs> so this was the prequel. I love it, dude. Dude, you haven't lived until you've killed a wedding party. <laughs> this is the prequel to the red wedding. Uh, this exactly. is where they got the exactly. idea for the red wedding. Oh man, like, like, dude, rolling up on a wedding was like goddamn Christmas <laughs> because it was like people they bring gifts. Oh man, they have gifts to give, and you, you murder <laughs> them and take all the wedding gifts and everything. <laughs> and it's like, it, what's great is usually like GMs are even at those weddings, but you're not breaking the rules by like just. You're just PvPing, dog. And so the GMs just an ass. And yes. the GMs would not. <laughs> no, they get just involved. stand they would there, stand there, and watch, watch the it fucking happen. carnage because it's I not love, against oh the man, rules. Oh man, oh I loved it. <laughs> what was it was it? so good. We the were, glimmer in your eye. Oh, it's bringing me back. Yeah. Before I started playing, when Brandon was just talking about it, I knew Alistair was the only one I knew that played besides Brandon. And we were doing some sort of uh, improv game. He was he was a senior and I was a junior in high school. And we we had a theater class together. We were doing some kind of improv thing where he was on stage on a stool and we were improving thing. He was the king, and we were bringing gifts. We had to improv gift gifts to, the, gifts to the king to make him smile or make him crack or whatever. So like I pulled Alistair aside and I was like, "What can I do? What's something you all related that I, that I can?" Get give to him to make him laugh to Brandon to Brandon okay and then so he whispers something in uh, I also whispers whispers something in my ear I go I get a sharpie and I write on my chest and then whenever I go up and he's like what do you bring the king I take off my shirt and I have deed to tower <laughs> written on it <laughs> and on he, your chest on my chest in sharpie and he yeah he died laughing <laughs> didn't really know what I was do- saying or doing but um, again in UO it was always about it's not what you know it's who you know yeah. and uh, what one of the best things about being at Apex was I'd be, as my crafter, as my whatever, even my high-level warrior, I couldn't compete against some of these PKs. And I spent a lot of time in Felucia. Eventually, I went back to Felucia and just stayed over there. But uh, it was nice because I'd be walking around and I'd be like, oh, shit, 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 Nick, 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 Nick. He's like, what, dude? I'm like, dude, I got like three PK chasing me. He's like, where are you? You're right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then I'd be like, I'm in Moonglow, in the forest outside of Moonglow. And he's like, just a second. He would fucking come in there and just dragons. <laughs> dead oh we were spiteful too yeah like uh, yeah like don't fuck with our friends don't fuck with our friends because we will camp your bodies for two hours (laughs) i had a lot of chases mostly as as my mage i was the one being chased uh but i would be on horseback uh and all of a sudden yeah somebody out of nowhere would appear and start attacking me and i'm dying it's doing i'm doing everything i can to to uh cast the antidote spell you know i'm uh like one hit from dying and i just take off running uh because it takes time to cast a spell right and this guy fizzle yeah it could fizzle especially Uh, if you're you're running too yeah. yeah Uh, so I would have to stop to cast a teleportation spell to get away or a recall spell, you know, to, to go back to a, a specified point uh-huh. that's safe. Uh, so that would take time. I would have to stop and that time they would catch me. So you just run. Uh, so it's a horseback chase, uh, like through the woods, like monsters are like running by monsters. <laughs> They're like focusing in on us. And You're dragging me. everything. Yeah, with you. yeah. I am. And, and like, I didn't get away all, every time, but a few times I did. And that was a rush. Yeah. That yeah. Was, it, we're probably getting the same adrenaline rush. You, just on the other yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably chased me a few times. Um, uh, man. I, I didn't. Cause I, I guess I didn't know you back yeah, then. Yeah. We didn't yeah. play together yeah. as far as I know. Yeah. I'm, might have chased you and would never have known. <laughs> um, I got my start actually. I started getting that rush from PK hunting. Yeah, um, and it's like once I because like, you could cut their heads off and take them to the guards for and, a reward. Yeah, collect a bounty. Mm-hmm. So I got really into that. I remember the first time I tried to kill somebody who was red, which meant they were a murderer. Um, that was kind of like dipping my toe into the PK world or the PVP world, and I fucking loved it. Like yeah. I mean, it was like, oh, this is amazing. I just gonna I'm just gonna try to kill everybody who I run across right. and just see what happens because it's one of those things where it's like 
I was not good at it at first and I kept dying and dying and like my heart got all callous, you know, yeah. <laughs> where it's just like, that. well, it died. Who cares? Right. Uh, and then once it got to that point, it was just like, yeah, it's, it's, it's on. Yeah, the I, most I guess dangerous we didn't really... man in the world is the man who has nothing left to lose. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> right? yeah. So yeah, I guess we didn't really talk about it very much, but yeah, there is a karma system. The more evil deeds you do, uh, you get titles like right. the nefarious or uh-huh. the, the dubious. Yeah. 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 And for uh, Dread Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Red Lord, Lord was, was like, like the title, one, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, but yeah, you if you kill somebody, you, you your name turns red for right. a while, flagging you as a criminal. Uh, people flagging you as a murderer, or, yeah, murder because Gray was criminal. Uh, uh, but uh, but right. eventually That's that right. would wear off unless you did it a lot. Yeah, uh, I think then, it was seven people. Yeah. If you killed seven people, you're you're perma red, and then you're perma red, uh, which means you pretty much are done in towns in civilized. Yeah, you can't. In a civilization, you, you, you're done. Because if you walk into town as a red, you're going to die. You die instantly. The guards see you. You're dead. You just die. And uh, if anyone but, aids you, yeah. they uh, become a criminal. Yeah, so like, even if someone heals yeah. heals a, a red character, they become gray. Right. Because it's, yeah, exactly. They're, they're aiding a murderer. But there's also, uh, uh-huh. I forgot the name of it. There's a town of criminals. Buccaneers Den. Buccaneers, Buccaneers Den. Den. Yeah, yeah, so, Buccaneers so, Den. That so was my stomping ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no guards. Nope. But not a anything goes. You better and know how to handle your goes. shit when you're there. You better know what you're doing. And I think that's where you got the black sandals, right? Wasn't um, it, I? I got my black sandals. I'm so glad you brought up black sandals. Yeah, because okay, fashion is a very very important in this game. Weirdly, yes. Yeah, fashion very important. <laughs> Status is what uh, it's all about. Yeah, and uh, uh, the the elusive black sandals. Uh, just that was it. No, they offered no bonus or nope. anything like they that. They were just they pure were black, just pure black mm-hmm. sandals. Uh, they sold for more than a castle. Yeah, uh, it was yeah more expensive than the most expensive, I guess, in game than a item. castle it deed. Was, yeah, than the castle deed. So it was just a, uh, it was just the, I, I guess, the organic economy. Uh, demanded these well li- <laughs> because you could buy dye and make dyes to color uh-huh. your clothing and so if you were a tailor or whatever you would have a chest full of all the different colors of dye and you but just, th- there's a limited but spectrum there's right. a limited spectrum and you could get black dye but you couldn't dye sandals, sandals. Mm-hmm. leather wow. items you couldn't mm-hmm. dye black or something for a long time for the longest couldn't. time eventually they, they made it to where you could dye everything black and then that just all went away and that kind of makes me laugh at like who bought 10 million dollar black sandals and then right. they were just everywhere right. but um but yeah that was the biggest thing if you were a tailor is keeping the the colors of the you know you'd have a whole you'd go to the shops you'd go up north where they'd have the whole towns full of vendors yep. and they'd have shirts and cloaks and hoodies and all that stuff laid out on the ground in all the spectrums of colors and then you could click one and say how much it cost and you give them the gold and it would show up in your pack and but uh, the, when they came out with clothing dye, that was like, that was a big deal. That's the first time I went to UO jail was over black sandals mm-hmm. because um, we, Frankel and I, found a vendor in one of the expansion lands uh, where this vendor sometimes spawned with black sandals. And we camped that spot, and every time that vendor would appear, we'd, we'd kill that NPC. Uh, and if it was wearing black sandals, we would pick it up. Now, by by killing the NPC, we would uh, get a criminal charge, and which would which means that anybody around us could attack us with no penalty. With no penalty, right? But I didn't give a shit because it's like what I did. What it's an NP, it's a low level NPC vendor. So I went in, stood next to it naked, and when it appeared, punched it to death. And then <laughs> if it was wearing black sandals, uh, I would trade it to Frankel, who was standing right next to me. So it was just we had the, we had. It worked mm-hmm. out to where we could just if a vendor spawned with black sandals, it was ours. Um, and that's the first time I went to UO jail because uh, GM Glacius popped up, uh, and like, well, he pops up in flame because that's how that's how they would appear. They would teleport to you in a column of flame. It's very intimidating, <laughs> yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, really. And like, like what I remember what happened. It was like, yeah, what the <laughs> hell is going on? And the next thing I know, the screen is black. And then I am in a small stone room. Like in game, I am physically, my character is physically in a small stone room. Uh, and the GM appears in front of me uh, and says, uh, Gives you your trial. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Chance, a chance to answer for your actions. And uh, of course, I was a 17 year old asshole. <laughs> and he was like, uh, Do you know why you're here? And I said, I really don't. 
because I don't I I don't know what I'm doing that's breaking any rule. Yeah. Uh, and he said, "Well, you're tying you're you're killing that vendor so often that that players who legitimately need to buy and sell goods that that vendor is selling don't have the opportunity." Not my problem. And that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> yep. what I said. I said, <laughs> "Not my problem." I know. I know. And that's then what and then he said. then he disappeared, and I was in jail for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fix your fucking vendor. And then oh, they did eventually. Yeah, it stopped spawning black sandals. <laughs> and, there you go. But by that time, Franklin You made and them I, change the I game. <laughs> <laughs> by that time, Franklin and I had 10 pair. So, and we did sell those motherfuckers for like 2 million gold a pop. Oh, man. Uh, and then it's like, then it's just this long story. Like, all, now all of a sudden, I feel like a fucking punk rocker where it's like, fuck that guy and fuck all these GMs. I'm going to do everything I fucking can to disappear disrupt this game i'm going to embrace the chaos i was in jail so goddamn off it like i mean it was just like and they'd show up and like i've never in my life felt more like judd nelson in the fucking breakfast club where say, it's you like, brought 80s the 80s to ultima online hey you want to be in jail for another hour fuck you a day suck my dick two Make days <laughs> <laughs> Play with the bull, you get the horns. <laughs> I swear, man, I was in jail so fucking frequently. And what was hilarious was it wasn't tied to your account. It was tied to your character. Yep. So it's like you put one of my seven XGMs in jail. Guess what, son? I'm logging in with one of my four other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. Oh, shit. Oh, It man. was such a great game. The uh, experience was... Yeah. The experience was great for just about everybody I know who played it, if not everyone. And it was it was because it was the Wild West. You could just do whatever the fuck you wanted. They kind of made it up as they went along. Whenever they'd fucking catch you fucking exploiting something, that's how that's when they would fix it. Like we yeah. we'll fix it after we find out that it's happening yeah. in real time. But until then, you know, do your thing. Wasn't there? What was it, like the main website? Like a Stratix. big forum? UO yeah, Stratix, yeah. which remember, still exists. Yes, I remember going there and reading the stories where like people would type about about their characters or about a ter- character archetype. Like somebody talking about like uh, t- typing from the perspective of like an interviewer for a paper or something like that in town interviewing a famous assassin being nervous walking into the tavern and knowing him there by his plain his plain clothes plain features but a, a very pitted weapon at his side waiting patiently and going to be interviewing them about poisoning and things mm-hmm. like that I mean I love reading those yeah, things yeah. yeah it was wonderful and it, you know that is why this thing was such a big deal I can't think of any thing that I put this much time and energy into like I went to school and I didn't give a fuck. You know, I was like, eh, school, I hate school, I have to do this, whatever. I, I, I spent so much time and energy and gave so much of a shit about UO. It really affected me. And to this day, I think, damn, I want to play again. I still get the mm-hmm. urge to play again, but I won't. There is a free server called UO Renaissance. Josh and I played on it a little bit. Right. Um, I will say that my I was really into it. I got it installed. I started doing my unintended unintended macroing to get my hiding. I was trying to recreate my mm. assassin character. And that game was just about unplayable for me. Yeah. And that made me really sad. I know. And I kind of want to be it's I kind of so want to just I kind of want to just Stick with the memory. Yes, you know that is that is my advice. Don't don't. It's like the don't meet your favorite celebrity type of thing. I I experienced it. I was there. I went through it at in its heyday. You can never go home. And I'm never I'm <laughs> never gonna go back. And I'm okay with that because I'll never forget it. It was wonderful. It was just so much fucking fun. I'll have a link to the to the free server in the show notes. Right. It still exists as far as I know. I went to check the site out today and it's still up and active. It it they, it takes place right around the uh second expansion. So, uh, do you remember speaking of expansions, did uh Josh, I know you mentioned that you were playing when the Blackthorn expansion happened. So, right. that means that I know at least you had experience with the 3D client that they tried adding into the game. Oh, uh, God, yeah. I, do you remember I that? played that too. Oh, I God. tried that, but bad. luckily 2D was still an option. Mhm. Uh it wasn't forced 3D, which I tried 3D immediately went back to it was 2D. T- 3D was, it was awful. Yeah. It, it was, was essentially three like 3D. Let's go ahead and put it in quotation marks because it 
was like a dressed up 2D. Yeah, it was pre-rendered. It looked like Donkey Kong essentially yeah. because it's like, yeah, these were 3D models that we turned into 2D sprites. So uh, it does look like shit uh, because it's isometric <laughs> and we're trying to like show these characters from a whole bunch of uh, different points of view. Yeah, that was terrible. It was really bad. I remember because I've read forgot about, about that, that forum that I read. I've read one about a like a witch, mage slayer or the witch hunter it was called one of the two. So I made I was like, okay, I'm actually gonna do this. I'll make a melee character. I looked up like the best builds for that, and the the G, the big skill it was centered around was magic resistance. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, re- I remember. Resistance. I remember. Uh, shocking the hell out of you. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I would have, I made that character, I made it to the guild, and I was like, well, the best way would probably be go to Felucia and I'll have Josh and Alistair use their mages and just nuke Train. me yep. till I GM it. Right. Man, that fucking skill. That takes a long that time to do. That skill was a nightmare. Josh was always friendly about it. Alistair, on the other hand, oops, lol, killed me so many times. <laughs> so many. Like, he would make a, a wall of flame, and I'd just walk back and forth, walk back and forth, yep. trying to raise it. I might have gotten, like, 30%, and I put so much fucking time into it. And it was a very, Ooh. very hard Ooh. skill to build up. GM'd there were some, it. yeah. I GM'd it yeah. through, uh, completely through unattended scripted macros. There was uh, some mm. that were super hard to do. I GM'd healing. Uh, That's when a you... shitload of bandages on yeah. me, and then I I scripted a macro where like every five seconds I would use the bandages to heal myself. Uh, I was on a boat outside. It was essentially in international waters. <laughs> I was on a boat with uh, Frankel, who had set up his own macro to cast um, a high level nuke on me, like every uh, six seconds. So essentially, it would work. He would nuke. He would nuke me. I would heal up. He would nuke me, and then we would just watch anime for eight hours while that went on. Well, and then the other thing that was handy, because when they brought the boats out, you always gain skill faster when you move. Right. Mm. And if you don't, if you just stood in one place and tried to master a skill, your gains would slow down drastically. You'd still get gains, but you wouldn't get them nearly as fast. It would be right. like snail's pace. Which is them so trying the idea, to combat people unattended macro. So the idea was to put yourself on a boat and program your macro to go so far forward and then say east mm-hmm. and then say south. And then you go in a big spiral, a big circle mm-hmm. or a spiral always moving always moving so that you were on a fret and it would it was always a good idea to stop and stay stopped for a few minutes right and, and then, then move. move to the next square and keep doing that because you would gain 10 times faster that way because you're in a new square right and that was how they were trying to combat the unattended mm. macroing but if you were good like we were you could write scripts in UO script that would keep that boat just moving constantly all day that's how I did mining up 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 I'd gain in mining I'd go back down I'd go back up by the time I got up here the square had been refreshed right and that's how that's how we do but and, that is a prime example I think of like how MMOs have completely changed because Ultima Online always felt to me like the devs were trying to keep up with the players who were exploiting the game. Yes, they were. Like, I feel like they were never actively being like, let's look at the game and see what the problems are. Like, they were, I felt like they were always catching up to people like us who were like, exploit, let's do it up. Well, and you could actually kind of get the impression from some of the devs and some of the GMs that they'd slap you on the wrist, but I think with a little respect, like... If you did something major that you could really find a buck, they were actually grateful because you're doing their job. You're doing their job for Mm -hmm. them. It's like, well, all right. Because you know, they didn't take your black sandals away. Nope. No, they didn't. You're right. These are the things. Even though I was a huge asshole, they could have. (laughs) Right. They absolutely could have. And you couldn't have done anything about it. But again, we were learning it. They were learning it. We were all sort of in this together. And I just, that's what I loved about it. That's, that was just so much fun. Did somebody Apex GM begging? I did. You did? I did. Um, I'm so glad you brought up GM begging because I GM begging is a skill where you can. Did we say that means grandmaster? Or did we just. Oh, I think we just assumed that everyone thought. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. we reached 100% of the skill. You've grandmastered it, GM. Right. Thank you. Uh, We're an hour late on that. (laughs) Wow. Oops. Yes, we are. Uh, begging was a skill where you could, you would use a skill, you would target, uh, typically an NPC and it would check your begging skill and that NPC would give you money. 
Um, I know people who I I GM'd it just to fucking GM it because I had this thing where I wanted to GM every skill in the game. Didn't happen. Uh, but begging was one that I happened to get. Uh, begging from real players was always more fun and was so fucking lucrative. I remember uh, I tamed a giant frog one time and I took it to the largest bank in the game. And I remember walking around the bank, just doing laps around the bank, uh, essentially approaching people and saying that my frog was very sick and needed an operation. (laughs) (laughs) And then like some people would ignore me. Some people would laugh. And then when someone would laugh, I'd be like, this guy's going to give me money. And I would just keep, I would keep working them up and be like, yes, my frog, uh, uh, my frog got pregnant. Uh, and we, I need to pay the doctor, uh, to have all these tadpoles delivered. And eventually they would either like, just pay me to get rid of me for an amp abortion. Please. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or or they would or they would pay me just like one guy was like all right this is funny here's here's 5 gold now now go away please <laughs> Just the interactions in that game. Yeah. We got to wonderful. the point where um, we just had so much money between us. It was all. meaningless. It was really just. It was there was no end to it. Eventually, the the money. The, there got to be so much money in the game that you could go to the bank and have a check created. Right. Uh, so if you had millions and millions of gold, you know it was stacks and stacks and of these piles of gold stones, and it weighed a lot of money. So mm-hmm. when you get it into the bank, what you do is you just say check one million, and it would put a check in your bank that was blessed it could not be stolen it could not be used for anything it was your Boo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, did not, I did not like uh, checks when they came out you had, so you could have all these checks that didn't weigh anything and it would represent your money but Bart you remember Bart mm-hmm. he's the guy that I'm buying my house from actually oh really I didn't... Yeah, that's his house oh that's right yeah yeah and... <clears throat> I got back into the game at one point when we had stopped and then I came back into it and Bart and Bob had continued playing of Duhast fame Bob of Duhas fame. <laughs> and uh, they had been playing this whole time. And I got back into it because Bob kind of talked me into it. I'm like, fuck, okay, I'll get back into it. And this wasn't, this was maybe a year after we'd quit. This was still, <clears throat> it was still a thing. It was still fresh. Mm-hmm. I got in there to play, and Bart was like, I was like, well, I don't have any money. I got to go start up. He's like, no, 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 no. He gives me a fucking check for like five million gold and a <laughs> deed to a house and a deed to a boat. And he's like, I'm like, dude, this is a lot of, he's like, man, I got. I got boat deeds filling up a bank box. He's like, I don't care. Just take what you need. And so it, it, it was nice at first because I'm like rolling around in this big Scrooge McDuck pile of money. <laughs> and I'm putting a house up and I've got a boat and I'm smoking a big fucking cigar. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't earn this. I didn't do anything to get. I'm like a level fucking 10 nothing. <laughs> You're made. And I have this house and this stuff. I kept it all so I could put stuff in it and everything like that. But it, there was so much satisfaction from getting enough money and keeping it from murderers and thieves and just dying and losing it and everything else to be able to go in and buy that boat or buy that house and put it up and say, I've, you actually put the time in and you've earned this thing. It was really great. I made uh, I made my fortune. Uh, of course, I initially I made quite a bit of money killing dragons. Uh, I would just go that was and a very and, lucrative. Yeah, and uh, exploit job. the AI. Find a cliff uh, where yeah, the dragon uh, couldn't attack you right. and blast it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, you got other things. You got random gems, random magic items, stuff like that. But scales. Uh, you could make uh, dragon mail suits right. of armor. It was pretty cool. But uh, uh, eventually, with my mage, I started doing taming. I wanted to be a gym tamer. That's a big uh, and, deal. And have a dragon pet. That's the power uh, skill of Ultima. I never never made it to a hundred. Never neither. made it to grandmaster. But I got I got pretty high. I got in the eighties, I think, uh, which was enough to tame nightmares. Right. Which were oh my god, which were the, nightmares. the horses, hellish uh, steeds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you you could feed them meat. Uh, mm-hmm. That was a pretty cool touch. Uh, oh, and they and you could not only ride them, but they. Could beat the shit out of somebody. Oh yeah, they could, yeah. They you could, could send oh, them to attack, yeah. and yeah, they would cast lightning bolts. And, <laughs> I mean, and spit yeah. fireballs out of their mouths. Well, yeah. A well-trained uh, nightmare make a dragon look like a sheep. 
Yeah. I mean, I've seen nightmares that just took dragons down. And they're faster hit. than the dragons. Yeah, and they're too. faster. Yeah. But uh but yeah, I would just go to the the dungeon where they spawned, uh tame a few, bring them back to town and and sell, sell them. Sell them. Yeah, and I made yeah. a fuck ton of money oh, like yeah. that, but nightmare. Night. I'm so glad you reminded me of Nightmare. <laughs> me too. Your taming was higher than mine. Yeah. Taming was so hard for me oh, because yeah. that was honestly, it was because that was a skill that I couldn't macro and attended. That's what yeah. made that skill, yeah. I think, the hardest skill in the game. It, it took patience. It took patience mm-hmm. and because you had to do it actively, and it actually took a really long time. Like That was one that took so long to, to grand master. You had to have... Wasn't that a bard did? Did a bard do something with yeah. taming? No, well, they could... They they did. Um, they had. There was a few bard skills. There was provocation, uh, which you could make uh, something fight something else. So like. Uh, I did have a bard character. One of my favorite things to do because I was a fucking shit lord uh, was <laughs> was to go into a dungeon, lure like go to the deepest part of the dungeon, lure a dragon or a bay lord, just some kind of like demon lord, doop, 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 just just kite it on up to the top level, and then play my loot and make it fucking kill like whoever I wanted <laughs> because it was a skill where it was just like you use it on a monster and then tell that monster to kill something and, and then. As the skills would increase, they increased by a tenth of a percent. Yeah, it was. And so you would start out at 1.0 or 0. Mm-hmm. 0.0, and then it would go up 0. 0.1, and 0. <laughs> 0.2, <laughs> 0. 0.3, until you essentially you have to get a thousand points mm-hmm. to, yeah. to get to 100, to get to Grandmaster. Uh, and just the satisfaction from hitting. That 100. Mm -hmm. You're at 99.9, and sometimes it would be a solid week of just grinding to get from 99.9 to 100. Mm -hmm. But boy, when you hit it, it felt good every mm-hmm. time. You just like, yeah, fuck yeah, I have done this. It won't ever go down. I'm, I love it. But, but I, I interrupted you, Josh. You were saying something about taming before I mentioned Bard. Uh, I honestly forgot. Where sorry, I was going. sorry. I kind of <laughs> yeah. I'm that and too. I'm really really bad at that. I I'm sorry. I'm just really excited <laughs> to talk about this game. Yeah. I'm glad that you brought up Bard skills, Tyler, because one of my favorite memories of playing with Brandon of Axale fame uh, was he uh, had a bard name uh he was the one that remember Ku- tell me about it kuotech who i think mm-hmm. what i th- i think is the name of a journey song or an album i uh, i'm not super versed with journey uh but he was a big fan and is a big fan uh his bard uh i remember having a blast with him in the vein of uh hanging around town asking begging for people to help me pay for my frog's operation uh we organized cockfights uh, where I would tame, I would tame a chicken. So one of the best things about taming is that you could name a creature. Uh, and so it would show up as that name to everyone, right? Instead yeah. of a chicken, like when I, if I tamed a chicken, once I tamed it, I could I named it Liu Kang, and then it doesn't matter if it <laughs> if I could release it and be like you're going to the wild, Liu Kang. You're no longer my my pet. The name doesn't change back to a chicken. It's just Liu Kang is just wandering around. So uh, which was actually a PvP tactic because um, something that I would also do is tame something low level, name it the same name as myself, uh, and use it as a decoy, where it's like <laughs> like I could tame something, name it Slain, which was the name of my mage, uh, and make a getaway because uh, a tamed creature, a creature is gray. So if I had done a criminal act and people were after me, I could quickly tame a squirrel or some shit and be like, your name is Slain, and then like just go the completely opposite direction. <laughs> was, uh, wasn't there some technique you could change the color that your name appeared so people were t- turning their, their names red, which was the same as being flagged as a murderer uh if you were in and, a guild i believe okay you could, you could change your okay name. that was right. it yeah because so you, yeah. you you this red character would walk <laughs> into town and you would run up and attack <laughs> them because hey why not right? red day. Yeah. and then and they then, call guards and, then <laughs> and they get your shit <laughs> yep but I remember Brandon and I hanging around town, uh, taking bets on cockfights. I remember he and I, uh, he would play provocation to make Liu Kang and Johnny Cage fight, and I would walk around the bank trying to like bark at people to get people to come and, and take bets on on which which cock would win. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do this shit in no, World of Warcraft. No, you like, I mean, no, you can't. No. They're just endless 
possibilities in Ultima that you could do literally anything. I remember my first kill. I know I've talked about this on the mics before. <laughs> Tell us, Dexter. I got, oh man, I, I remember going down like my first, my first like real murder. Right? Not my like. This is when I graduated from like. Well, fuck killing reds. I'm gonna just kill dudes. Uh, so I, would, I remember going down to the deepest part of this dungeon where uh, people would fight lich lords. Uh, lich liches being you know the undead spellcasters, mm-hmm. the big bads of lich undead lords creatures. Were tough, but very they pay off. Yeah, they they had a lot of treasure, so people would farm them. Uh, I remember I remember being really nervous because I was like. I was like, I don't know. This is my first shot at like just killing somebody who truly does not deserve it. Uh, but I don't know. I said, and I was a grandmaster hiding, grandmaster stealth. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to go down there and just see if anyone's there and just kind of gauge the situation and see how it goes. So I stealth down to the Lich Lord room. It was a room where like four of the baddest fucking liches would spawn. Um, there were and also a few big poisonous spiders down there. Lots of. Lots, Lots of, of nasty this shit. It was a tough room. And I remember going down there, and there were three people farming the liches. And I was like, there's three people. I'm, I'm one guy. I, I have limited experience in PvP. I could maybe take one of these guys if they're fighting a lich, but I, I'm not confident enough to just pop in and fucking Kill Bill style three dudes. So I was like, well... Who knows? Maybe I can like maybe they'll leave and I can pick off a lich that they've like worked on and I can get some easy money. So I'm just in the corner, just hiding, uh, just watching them. And the way they had it worked out was one guy was in melee combat with a lich. Uh, the other guy was casting spells on the lich, and they had a, the third guy was dedicated healer. He was using bandages on the melee fighter. And I, it was like this perfect fucking storm. I and they were they were talking to each other out loud in uh, in the room, so I could hear everything they're saying. Uh, the the healer, or I'm sorry, the mage who's casting the spells says, "Shit, I'm out of reagents. Uh, I'll uh, I've I've got enough essentially to recall. Grab some more reagents and come back. I'll be right back." He leaves. Uh, no sooner does he do that, uh, the healer, like, I mean, it is like seconds later, the healer's like, I'm out of bandages. And the moment the healer said, I'm out of bandages, like f- the fucking flight of the Valkyries, like starts playing in my head. And it's just like, it's now or never. Like, I'm going to fucking like, this is it. This is my, this is the perfect opportunity. <laughs> that, that guy who's meleeing a lich, not only is fighting a monster, he has no one, no one can heal him. The mage can't heal him. The, the fucking bandage healer can't do anything. So I step out of the shadows. I'll never forget the name of this guy. He was, his name was Goku. <laughs> 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 and it was I stepped out of the shadows I, I this was even before Frankel had uh, grandmastered poisoning so I was just I just had a katana I remember that I, I start attacking the dude and uh, Goku sorry and uh, I remember like feeling his panic because like he didn't I, he did not know what to do because he didn't start defending himself but he also stopped fighting the lich like his like I could just see the player just which, seize up which with, is a like, bad idea yeah I mean, and he was he was gone in no time. Uh, his buddy like bails on him. Like the moment like he sees his friend drop, he's like uh, he starts casting recall. I run up, interrupt that spell. He runs away from me, starts trying to cast recall again. I fucking interrupt it again. I'm just I'm stuck on him. I've got liches on me, and I'm just like fuck it. If the liches kill me, I don't give a shit. I'm taking this guy down with me. Uh, I kill him. I swear to fucking God, two seconds after I kill him, the mage pops back into the room, uh, sees his two friends dead, uh, and sees this swarm of liches, uh, and I rush the mage and start attacking him. Uh, The mage fucking dies, and then I'm left in a room full of liches that absolutely destroy me uh i so i didn't get any like loot or anything like good out of that mm. other than the fact that i just straight up ruined the day like three <laughs> dudes because <laughs> the well the interrupt was the yeah yes, like, yes. The, the fizzles of, <laughs> the crocodile queef yes. as i always call yes. it <laughs> 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 it sounded like a car trying to start or something. It just 
fizzling out. Yeah. Oh man, I'm filled with joy right now. <laughs> like, oh man, this is good. I feel like Al Bundy reliving like the the football game that he would always talk about. <laughs> I can't remember how many touchdowns he had in one game, but so were there were there like seven dungeons each ended for a deadly sin? Yes. Yeah. There's because there's a little lore behind it. You yeah. Could, yeah it's could like you the, get stones from every dungeon or something like yeah, that. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know none, none of us played it, but yeah, uh, it, it's it's off uh, from uh, the the Ultima games from mm-hmm. the like regular Nintendo. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's the seven virtues and then seven. Well, it's not really seven deadly sins. There's like deceit and spite. Uh, spy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the dungeons. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's sp- supposedly some like special item or some like altar at the very bottom, most like dangerous part of the dungeon uh, that you can activate. There's yeah, there's some story to yeah. it. We did yeah. that we for never- a little while, but then oh, yeah. yeah. That was for Not PV. For that was for PVE noobs. Yeah, <laughs> I have no yeah. idea what any of that shit did. Yeah. All I know is people showed up there. And that's where you killed mm. them. Because I remember before, but I, I hadn't started playing yet. I was asking Brandon questions about it. I was like, if you could just get uh, any item in the game, what would you want? And he's like, man, well, I guess there are a few like black sandals, definitely. I was like, okay, Good what choice. else? Why, why black sandals? Are there sandals that are just black? They they make you run faster? No, no. they're just black. <laughs> All right, what else? Probably a fruit basket. (laughs) 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 A a fruit fruit basket? They're so rare. Oh, my God. They are so rare. Fruit baskets are so rare. They really are. I remember. I forgot all about that. Do you know the story about fruit baskets? No. (laughs) Okay, so um, every day, man, this makes, this really dates the game. Once every day, the server had to reset. Uh, which is like, that is unheard of now. Like there was like <laughs> two hours, two to three hours where the server would just be down. This was not a 24 hour, seven day a week game. The server would have to be reset. Um, uh, and actually I'm sorry. I think the daily resets were pretty quick, yeah, the they week, usually but they did a long. weekly maintenance yeah. that was like several hours yeah. long. So I, I apologize. Yeah. I had forgotten about that. Cause you would get a warning in game, like 30 minutes, 15 right. minutes, like get back yeah. to your fucking house or get to the right. bank, do something but we're taking the server down. There were certain things in the game that would only appear, they would only spawn once per reset. Fruit baskets were one of those things. <laughs> one fruit basket would appear at the same table in Ultima Online every time the server would reset. And the thing is that it was a decoration that you would see anywhere, but it happened to be the one fruit basket that never got locked down. Yeah, you could pick that one up. There was one <laughs> in the world that you could pick up, and you could only pick it up after a server could reset. Could you imagine the first guy that found one of those and just said, fuck, I'm going to drag this into... Holy shit, it's staying in my pack. I, I know. So we, Frankel and I, we would, whenever there would be a server maintenance, we had a fucking tool that would alert us when the servers would come back on. And we had it set up to like air raid siren sounds. Like our, <laughs> our job was essentially to play Ultima online. Like that's like, like that's the dedication we had. You're to not game. wrong. And then, like the air, the air raid sirens would go on. We'd be asleep on Ian's couch and wake up and log in and try to get the fruit baskets. And <laughs> I would be there with my PK, and my job was to keep dudes off of him while he mm-hmm. looted the fruit basket because a bunch of other guys were there trying to get the fruit basket. <laughs> it's just like, just, it's just surreal. <laughs> I mean, that is like, <laughs> but it makes perfect sense. It's like, despite how silly it sounds, it makes perfect fuck to this day to me. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> like it is crazy, but it is like straight up bizarre. I'm playing River City Ransom Underground right now, and it's like the plot lines in that get crazy. Like that belongs in a game. The fruit basket thing belongs in a game that doesn't take itself as seriously as UO took itself. <laughs> We gotta be running pretty long on this one. We are running super long. Yeah, we're running super long. But that was that was good. That was a good time. I got more stories. (laughs) (laughs) We could do this. We could do another one of these sometime. Oh, let's please let's do another one sometime. But I'll shut up for now. Let's let's, let's revisit because uh, there is more to talk about. Yeah, but it's you know is what it is. Well, yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Normal spiel. Blah blah. blah. Tadpog t-shirts. 
Yeah, Tadpog t-shirts I, on I Amazon. Tunes, Tadpog. Um, we do have a Patreon. If you yeah, enjoyed this um, and you want to hear more content, we've got some bonus episodes up on Patreon. We... Um, Despite Casper mattresses just knocking down our fucking door like a bunch of guys trying to get a fruit basket, we keep telling them no. We're like, no, we are 100% listener supported. Uh, and until you offer us more money, uh, we're not going to fucking do it. So um, those keep us going. Those uh, make us really happy because we're greedy. Hell yes. Um, and if you want to be one of the marvelous people that fucking chip in each month, like Ian, like Josh, uh, I urge you to do so at patreon.com slash tadpog. Uh, we do a bonus episode there each month uh, that is exclusive to donors. Uh, you um, get access to all the bonus episodes we've done. And as long as you remain a donor, you get access to the ones we do in the future. I was a very bad co-host last episode episode and forgot to thank some of our all, all of our patreon donors uh, so I need to do that real quick the problem is uh, that information is on my phone which is on your bed so I'm gonna go get that right now okay in the meantime we do have a PO oh. box Tyler and, and in that PO box we received a postcard oh yeah postcard uh, bicycle Oregon and it is a a hipster on a bicycle. Is it one of those great big bu- with the f- great big front wheel and little bitty back wheel? No, I wish. <laughs> it should be. We're riding a traditional bicycle, but clearly a hipster. Oh, clearly. okay. And on it, greetings from Oregon. Fuck this pen. Hell damn it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwich Pope Bill Hawkins. <laughs> I love the writing on that because you could tell that he was really struggling to write. It. it is just scrawled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is more etched on. That is but I'm looking at four packages right now that we're definitely going to get to. More postcards. It's fucking amazing. I've got love another it. package in my car. Oh, awesome. So if you want to contribute this, those, these are always uh, great intros to do. So we'll open one or two up on intros. So if you want to send us anything, please send it to Tadbox Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Duke, Kentucky 42002. Excellent. Thank you for buying me time to grab my phone so I can thank the people that I desperately need to thank, um, our Patreon donors. Uh, Golden God Alex Pina. <sighs> Holy shit, dude. Man. Holy shit, man. Uh, He's encroaching on another new title. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, pl- I, we have a platinum member. Do we, do we need a platinum god as well? We'll work on it. Yeah, we'll work on Definitely it. Definitely not bitch <laughs> wizard. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, Alex, dude, thank you so much. It's, it's amazing. Um, I'd also like to thank Exalted Lord Mike of Purdue uh, for upping his donation, riding that penny train. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, our very own Trash Bear, uh, Joseph E. Willard the uh, Third, for upping his donation, riding that penny train. Ian, <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, I'd, would you mind giving me one for uh, Exalted Lord Mike? <laughs> thank you. Uh, also, I'd like to thank... Uh, Martin Stein uh, for upping his donation, riding that double penny train, <laughs> the DP. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Persona Warrior Cody for upping his donation, riding that penny train. Thank you very much, Cody. I'd like to thank Tadpog Santa Jack of Ziggy Moons, Akema slash Kana Kanaha <laughs> for upping their, doma- their donation, riding that penny train. <laughs> thank you, Ian. I'd like to thank Exalted Lord Mike of Purdue for upping his donation again, riding that penny train. <laughs> thank you, Ian. Uh, let's see. I'd like to thank Persona Warrior Cody again for upping his donation. Yes, riding that penny train. Thank you, Ian. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> okay. I was gonna do it again, but you can't if just mm. knock yourself out. <laughs> uh, seriously, help. thank you to everybody who donates. It's yeah. it's amazing. Um it really does make a huge difference. Yep. I mean I it, it does. really <laughs> does make a huge difference. They're being genuine too. I can see it in their faces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm really, thank you. really <laughs> grateful. So I would never kill you in Ultima Online. No. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Forty dollars a month. You have immunity in all MMOs. <laughs> oh, Provides you death. safety. Man, I wish I'd have thought of that hey. fifteen years ago. <laughs> Looks like you're needing a little protection. I know huh? that would have been great. <laughs> the only reason I felt safe from you is because I was your boss. Yeah, oh no, I was not gonna fuck with you. Yeah, no, <laughs> you were a fucking killer, man. <laughs> I would not fuck with you. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let's see. Our theme song is "Move" of Sigmar Drive. Look at that track down the show notes. Typebot.com. You guys, want to close this out? Like our favorite murderer. Okay. So until next time. Tropical. Man, man, it's tropical Capricorn. Pet the world with a, pet the world with a knife. Charlie Manson. <laughs>
You know, Jack, you know you ain't got you ain't got shit on Charlie Manson. I gave you something to do, and if you ain't gonna do it, I'm gonna get involved, and if you don't want me involved, get it done. Man, I don't, I don't, I don't plop my Because you don't want me involved. I regret this decision. I plop my finger in, I plop my finger in her bush so deep I can fucking feel her tonsils. She's all like, oh, fuck me, Charlie. I've been listening to a lot of the black podcasts in the last week. Yeah, keep it. More talking. Yeah. Yes, please. Check, keep check, talking. check, check, check it out. Check, 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 check one, check two. Out. Next time you yo, get in our way, yo, I'm not going to sun don't shine back. forever. As long as you hear you may as well. <laughs> shine together. Another, this is for Pleasure PTD and the fam. You know, do it do better. better. Man, we got the best stinger ever. <laughs> <laughs> ever. People are going to remember this stinger for ages to come. The po- We're going to win podcasting awards <laughs> for this stinger. All right, I think, of history. I think the levels um, on this are okay now. That so. dry tub sick beat. Yeah, dry tubs.